Brees going for the end zone, and it's going to be caught by Willie Sneed. Brees going to loft it downfield into double coverage. Wow. Touchdown, C.J. Spiller. Brees has thrown seven touchdowns in this game. Long-time voice of the Saints, Jim Henderson, got a workout last week because Breeze was on fire. What a terrific game with seven touchdown passes, over 500 yards, and at 36 years of age, the oldest quarterback to ever throw for over 500. He won't be getting the ball first, though. The flip of the coin won by the Titans, and they will get it first. And Dexter McCluster will return. Bishop Sankey has been the return man, but he was stripped of those duties because of muffs and fumbles on returns. Thomas Morstead will be kicking off for the New Orleans Saints. Saints coming off a win, a high-powered, high-scoring affair against the Giants last week. And for Tennessee, a 20-6 loss in Houston, and here we go. Saints and Titans. And McCluster will leave it in the end zone. It'll be first down and 10 to go. Here is the quarterback Marcus Mariota who began very well with four touchdowns week one. Then from there he was taking a pounding eventually twisting a knee MCL sprain. Now here he is with a new play caller and new mechanics Rich. Yeah that's the, the big challenge I think for the Tennessee Titans. Can they get off to a good start and of course Jason Michael will call the plays. They'll be signaled down from the press box to John McNulty the quarterback coach. So the mechanics for the quarterback is going to be very different today. Mariota with the first and ten. And this is the running back, Antonio Andrews, who is brought down after a gain of five by Bobby Richardson. Shuffling on the offensive line today, and left guard Byron Bell moves to right tackle because of ineffective play from their rookie over there. And Kendall Wright is gone, injured and out. Justin Hunter replaces him. And we just saw Antonio Andrews run the ball. They want to have a workhorse back, and he's been the guy they've elected. Well, I think the biggest change you're going to see with Mike Malarkey, Kevin, is an emphasis on being a physically tough football team. And it starts with running the football, and it starts with playing better up front. And you mentioned the changes along the offensive line. I mean, you know, Bell moves over. Uh, Looney moves into the left guard position. They were not at all happy with the play they were getting at the right tackle spot, especially last week. Tassi really, really struggled against the Texans. John Jenkins, a starter all season, working on that shoulder, as you can see, taken off the field after a gain of five by Antonio Andrews. It'll be second down and five. McCluster is in. <laughs> Harry Douglas, one of the receivers, on the move. And McCluster looking for a block over there from Fasano. He picks up two. He's brought down by Stephen Anthony, their rookie middle linebacker. They're missing three linebackers today because of injuries. On the defensive line, Cameron Jordan playing at an all-pro level. Linebackers Hawthorne and Mowdy replacing the injured Ellaby and Kikaha. And in the secondary, Brandon Browner, a two-time Super Bowl starter, leads the NFL in penalties. We'll be watching him today, but there's a look at Cameron Jordan. Yeah, third down has been a real problem for the Tennessee Titans. One of 12 last week. Third down, three. Andrews back in. They go outside. McCluster broken up by Delvin Bro, who really took a beating last week with three touchdown passes to Odell Beckham Jr. It's three and out. They got a punt. Well, you've got McCluster out there, Kevin. He's a, a shorter receiver, if you will, and you got to put it on him. Bro right there for the easy breakup. Hate to start a game three and out. To punt, Brett Kern. Good to be indoors today with it a little bit windy and rainy outside here in Louisiana. And bringing it back, Marcus Murphy. He's a rookie out of Missouri. He had a 24-yard punt return against the Giants last week. He returns that one 12 after the 56-yard punt by Kern. There's a look at Drew Brees. He had one for the ages last week against the Giants. You know, there are points at, during that game last week that I didn't think he'd ever throw an incompletion. I mean, <laughs> and he, he can get like that. He can get on a roll. It's not uncommon to see him complete 20 straight passes. 
Yeah, 19 in a row last year. He was just amazing with his accuracy. Ray, Ray Horton was great, the defensive coordinator last night. So we, we, we hope that he got wore out last week against the Giants. <laughs> Here's a first and 10 with a handoff to Mark Ingram, who picks up a yard on the play. Griffin coming from the secondary and bringing him down. Well, let's talk about the offensive line. The left tackle, Teron Armstead, having a Pro Bowl-type season. He's been terrific. The line actually has played very well. And Brandon Cooks is the leading receiver for this New Orleans offense. And he was a main target last week. And they welcome Max Unger and a trade with Seattle as their center. It's been a real difference maker. Breeze wasn't sacked once last week when he threw seven touchdowns. Ingram trying to run. Brought down by the linebacker, Avery Williamson, after a gain of three. Tennessee defense has been really, really uh, terrific all season long. Angry the defensive line, Jarrell Casey, a former All-Pro player. He's got four sacks. Linebacker Brian Arakpo he is new this season for the Titans after six years in Washington. In the secondary, quarterback Jason McCourty is injured now. Cody sets the ball, replaces him. Bleedy Ray Wilson is out. Parrish Cox replaces him. And to the air is a speed on 36. And he was brought down on the side by Cody Riggs. He's out to the 42 and picks up a first down on a game of 10. Well, Kevin, you mentioned that without Jason McCourty, also without Bleedy Ray Wilson, they go right after the corners. They do a great job, the Saints, spreading you out. They're going to get you a lot of different looks initially in a game with different personnel groupings, different formations. Sean Payton trying to probe to see how you're going to line up versus the different sets. Here's a couple tight ends, the fake to Ingram, a block by Armstead, and a wide open receiver downfield. He takes it to the 34-yard line, Williamson down there to make the stop, and Brandon Crooks picks up 25, the second-year receiver out of Oregon State. Just watch how he sells this route and the patience that Brandon Cooks has. What it does is it creates some separation between himself and the safety and the linebacker. It's great anticipation by Breeze, but a great route gets it done. C.J. Spiller has come in with a first and ten. Former Buffalo Bills Spiller. Williamson again knocks him out of play. He has the catch and run. There's a flag thrown down to the 27-yard line with a pickup of six through the air. And Jerome Boger out of Atlanta is our referee today. Pass interference. Offense, number 89. Blocking downfield early. 10-yard penalty. Replay. First down. It's that's tight end Josh Hill. And they just keep it on the right side of your screen. Josh Hill, he's right here. He's, he's got the block before the back actually gets the ball. David Bass was giving him a tough time on the edge. First and 20, back to the 43. Good block by Spiller. Wide open receiver Coleman, all six foot six of them. Downfield to the Tennessee 15 yard line. Nice grab right there. Brandon Coleman out of Rutgers. 30 yard pickup and a first down. Well, he just gets him on the slant and go. I mean, this is a really nice route by Brandon Coleman. I mean, he has the size that you love. And you see him get between the corner Cox and the safety Griffin. Is that Griffin's guy or Cox's guy? Well, I think they're playing too deep cover. Just a great job by Drew Brees holding the safety with his eyes. Ingram, first and ten handoff. With a tackle made by linebacker Wesley Woodyard on a gain of three down to the ten. You know, just when you think you, you've had enough of Drew Brees, you, you forget about Mark Ingram. He had a breakout season last year, Kevin, with just under 1,000 yards, and he's, he's gotten so much better in the passing game. The one thing you can't forget about are these running backs in the passing game. They've already accounted for 77 receptions, including 33 from Mark Ingram. He was a pro bowler last year. He was terrific, you're right. He's a physical downhill runner. Five, four, five, four. Ready. Tight ends on second down and seven. Hill the tight end. Touchdown. Josh Hill. Well, they sell the action away, but you got to be able to keep an eye on the under route by the tight end on the backside. And everything happens so quickly when you watch this New Orleans offense operate. Very efficient, very detailed in their approach. 
His second touchdown reception on just his ninth reception overall this season. Kai Forbath, who had the game-winning field goal last week, splits it right here, 7-0 New Orleans. Breeze on that drive, 4-4. He got Cooks for 25, Coleman for 30, then the lumbering tight end for 10. And Pater for the Saints on their opening possession. Breeze is just remarkable in his Hall of Fame career. What, 51 consecutive home games now with a touchdown, an ongoing NFL record. And Kevin makes it look so easy. I mean, I think he's a master of his domain. We talked about it in the open. He's got superior knowledge and absolute ownership of this offense. Jerry and George talked about that too, Rich. The domain thing you're just talking about. Here's the kickoff now for the Saints. McCluster. Leaves it in the end zone and brings it back out. Looking for a clue to block and just can't find a whole lot there. As he was brought down on the play by Jamarcus Sanford on a 16-yard return with a penalty flag thrown on the return. During the return, holding, return team number 89. Half the distance to the goal. Since he keeps the ball. I'm out. That's Philip Supernaw who began the season with Baltimore. Drew Brees again with a touchdown pass right there. One of a kind with Benet's Cafe Dumont here in New Orleans. Second possession for Tennessee. Down on a Brees touchdown. Seven zip. Mariota. And he's bounced. No place to go right there. Losing a yard on the play. Mouty throws him back to the six. Well, we talked about the play entry being different. Now it goes from the booth. Jason Michael, the offensive coordinator, is now up in the booth. Down to John McNulty, who was the quarterback coach, into Marcus Mariota. And I think the biggest struggle, we talked to Mike Malarkey about this last night, has been the calling the plays. A lot of verbiage, something that Marcus didn't have in college. He really worked with cards and code words, so they have to get the plays in early. Second down, 11. Dropped. Dorio Green Beckham, flag thrown on the play. We saw John Jenkins get back in the game on that line for New Orleans on that last play. The flag was dropped. It's a hold that's on the Titans, as you can see. Never a good thing, Kevin, when you have a rookie center oh, and a rookie quarterback. Number 78. That penalty is declined. Third down. Rich, they signed Joe Looney, who is the center, October 20th, after Brian Schwenke was put on IR. They were replacing, uh, you know, this is the third different center that the Titans have had this season. And that's really where you know, all the communication starts. And it's a challenge, I think, Kevin, when you could constantly turning over that position to have some continuity and consistency along that offensive line. So Gallic goes into the center position. Looney, who was the center last week, moves to the guard. And Bell, who is at the guard, goes to the tackle. If you can follow all that, third and 11. Andrews was back there. Bell trying to give a block, and Mariota on the move, and he can't hit his running back at the 20. That was Andrews three and out. The punting unit takes the field again for Tennessee. Well, third down continues to be a problem for the Tennessee Titans, and of course it starts with poor protection. Marcus has to, he gets flushed, he has to move, but you know, a big reason why they've had their struggles on third down, the average yards to go is dead last. It's almost eight and a half yards uh, on third down, 40, four of 31 the last three weeks. You're not going to win football games when you can't convert on third down. Got to be careful here. The poor punt coverage of the Titans, number 31 in the NFL. Returning is Murphy, and here he goes. And a 12 yard to be four. Oh, and he fumbled the ball, and it was recovered on the play by Steve Johnson, a special teamer and a reserve linebacker out of Kansas. And a fumble right there by Marcus Murphy. A rookie, and the Titans get some early good luck in New Orleans. Yeah, keep an eye on, on Supernall, the tight end number 89. He's going to come in there, and he gets it with his right hand. He's the one that initially knocks it out. It's a terrific play, and Johnson right there to scoop it up. 
just got done saying they were number 31 in punt coverage. The coverage there was outstanding by the Titans, and so look where they get it. First down and 10 from the 42 of New Orleans. Three tight ends. And a nice weaving move right there by Antonio Andrews out of Western Kentucky. He goes for eight and takes it to the 33. Well, the offense has really struggled. I mean, the 31st in offense. Look at these numbers. Not had 300 total yards in the last four games. 13 points are fewer. And we mentioned the third down problems, Kevin. And again, I think it's you know, not only do you lose the head coach, you also lose the play caller. But they, they, they haven't been able to come up with an identity of who they want to be on offense. In that 43 defense, second down and one. Richardson is coming in on the quarterback, and that is thrown away over the head of the tight end, Craig Stevens, as Mariota felt the pressure. And again, he told us last night, ball security is now at the top of the list for priorities. Well, I think to win, they know they need a clean performance on offense. They can't have the self-inflicted wounds, the penalties, the turnovers, the, the mental errors. And the thing that Marcus Mariota brings you, Kevin, is some explosiveness, something that they haven't had at the quarterback position with Zach Mettenberger the last couple weeks. This guy can make some plays outside the pocket. Just two defensive backs, third and a long one. Mariota. And Andrews is just, he may be shy by a half yard. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it here on fourth down. Hit by a couple on the play. Bobby Richardson was leading the brigade inside for New Orleans. They have failed on 14 consecutive third down tries going back to last week. Well, anytime you get penetration, the short yardage or goal line situation, it's tough. You know, they're excited about this young back, Kevin Antonio Andrews. And not, a, not a lot of people know a lot about him. The free agent last year out of Western Kentucky. He's tough, he's physical, and he's a finisher. All right, here is Ryan Suckup who has not missed a field goal nor extra point this season. A 51-yard try to put the Titans on the board, and he is true. And it's 7-3. to three. Suck up 8-8. Eight of eight. Had a couple field goals last week in Houston. Mike Malarkey's got his first three points on the board. The longtime six-year head coach for the Jets, now with the Bills, back into New York. Think there'll be any bulletin board material? Oh, my gosh. Are <laughs> <Are> talking? <laughs> Rick's not going to be able to help himself. Now, with a look right there at Ryan Suckup with that 51-yard field goal, he's made 14 consecutive field goals going back to last season. And Murphy is back to retrieve it after fumbling the punt, which gave Tennessee the good position to get that three and get on the board. In actives today, we've talked about the linebackers, and let's throw in there Luke McCown with a back injury, the backup quarterback for the Saints. Really kind of a strange deal, Kevin. He heard it on Thursday. The team didn't really find out about it until Thursday night. And of course, you know that, that impacts not just in terms of what they do uh, with the backup plan, but also, as you mentioned, he is the holder. So now all of a sudden, Morstead has to hold for PATs and field goals. On the 20-yard line of the touchback, it's Ingram first and 10. Bobbled up inside by a couple, including Al Woods, with a gain of three to the 23. Well, you talk about the Tennessee Titans. The defense has not been their problem. They're top five in total defense, third against the pass, allowing just 198 yards a game through the air. And it really starts up front. They've got a good defensive line. They've got better guys on the perimeter with, obviously, Brian Arakpo coming over. Morgan's had a good start. The secondary, Kevin, today, I think, is really going to be challenged against Drew Brees in this past And game. it is a good secondary. That was batted by Arakpo and knocked down. They were going outside to Sneed. And Brian Arakpo, the three-time Pro Bowler, the Gursky Award winner, Lombardi Award winner at Texas, comes up with a nice deflection. And Armstead, the left tackle, he has to be more aggressive. You've got to fire out and attack the midsection of a guy like Brian Arakpo. You can't give him a free jump at a ball that's being kicked to the perimeter. Eric Morgan is now out at least for a while. We don't know if he's going to return on that 
Outside for the Tennessee Titans with a shoulder injury. Third down and seven. Here comes Breeze. The block by Armstead. He goes outside. He's got the receiver Sneed. And it's a first down reception to the 32. His coverage by Sensabaugh. Gain of nine. Well, the Saints really like Willie Sneed. I mean, he can do it all. He'll crack a defensive end. He'll block on the perimeter. He's tough. He catches everything. And Breeze told us on Friday he's, a, he's kind of a blend of Julian Edelman and Heinz Ward. And I like that in a receiver. He's got a couple third down receptions already today. The Sneed. He just does the right thing. He may not be the fastest guy or the, you know, the best route runner, but he's in the right place at the right time. Boy, did he have a long, circuitous route to a starting job in the NFL. First and ten. And they go right here to Benjamin Watson, right in front of Griffin. He's having a career year. It's a 12-yard gain. He's up to the 44. Let's go to New York and James. Bad thumb and all, Boomer. That's right. Ryan Fitzpatrick under center for the Jets. He's going to find Eric Decker, 7-yard TD reception. That's the sixth touchdown of the year for Eric Decker. Jets take a 7-3 lead. Kevin Harlan, Rich Gannon. You and I had the Jets in Oakland last week. We saw the injury to Fitzpatrick. Yeah, not, not surprised to see him come back. Kevin's a tough guy, but how about that Jets defense? They missed 25 tackles a week ago. Boy, some mass substitution there defensively for Tennessee, and the timeout taken by Breeze. And Breeze is saying, wait a minute, the clock is rolling. We're waiting for these guys. A flag has been thrown. There's a lot going on. This crew... Likes to throw the flag, too, don't they? <laughs> More than any other crew in football, Kevin. I... <laughs> Drew Brees is not at all happy. Time out in New Orleans. <laughs> They're first. There's no delay of so, yeah, so they were kind of forced to do it, weren't they? So look, look at all the bodies leaving, and then... You got the referee in there. Yeah. What's going on? Get him out of the way. <laughs> Well, you look at Drew Brees, Kevin. He was really frustrated with the, the mechanics of how the officials operated over that last play. They had to burn the timeout. Take a look at it after this play. First down and 10. Really what came to that was just the burning their first timeout of the game in the pistol here. Spiller back there. Brees to Spiller. And short. And tremendous pressure from Iraq Poe. Mike Carey joins us. Now, here's one of the things that you have to realize. The league does not want the offense to substitute and get an advantage by catching the defense off guard. So the umpire runs in, lets the defense match up, and if the clock burns down on the offense, it's on the responsibility of the offense to take that timeout. Second down and 10. Mike, hold on one second here as we watch Breeze. His own 44. And he gives it off to Ingram, who was met by a pile and brought down on the play after a gain of two by Wesley Woodyard. So is it on? Is it incumbent, Mike, uh, on Breeze to get things going? I mean, who, who's at fault in that particular play? Yeah, it's going to be on Breeze's shoulders. He's got to make sure that if he has a substitution, that they have plenty of time to get the playoff and let the defense match up yeah, the and wait for the officials to get out of position. Yeah, the problem was it took the Tennessee Titans too long to make their substitutions, and the umpire walked in not once but twice. That was some sloppy, uh, some sloppy mechanics, in my opinion. I thank you. Third and eight here for Drew Brees, who's done a touchdown pass already today, and he goes down the middle. Marcus Colston brought down by Griffin into Tennessee territory at the 38. He picks up 16 and a Saints first down. Well, I love what, what Drew Brees is able to do in the pocket, Kevin. Keep his eyes down the field, slide, keep the ball in a throwing position, and find the open receiver. He's not, not the tallest quarterback, but he does a great job finding windows in the rush lanes. But, but there are so many smaller quarterbacks who don't do it. But why does he do it at his size? Well, I think it's experience. I think it's him, his knowledge of defensive football. There's the 10 8 play, the drive, and going deep. Oh, he's got him! Brandon Cooks, touchdown! And he beats Parrish Cox. 38 yard strike. Breeze to Cooks. Well, we talked to Paris Cox last night, Kevin. What was the one thing he said they can't do? They can't allow Drew Brees to throw the ball over their head in the secondary. 
They've got to be able to defend the deep ball and, and eliminate the explosive plays. That's just what happened here. And, and you uh, talked about the attention to detail that Breeze has. Surely he knows he's going up against a cornerback in Cox who's been inactive the last couple games because of a hamstring. Yeah, and they're without their other starting corner, corner and Jason McCourty. Forbath makes it 14-3. to three. Two touchdown passes by Drew Brees. By the way, the record for two games in a row is 12. Second touchdown pass moments ago, this time at 38 yards from Drew Brees. Well, you got to find a way to get to him, Kevin, and disrupt him a little bit. The timing and the rhythm. If you, you allow him to sit back there, it's going to be a long day for this Tennessee defense. A cluster will get this. This is a returnable kick. And right from the goal line, Dexter McCluster from Mississippi. A high draft pick by Tennessee. Sanford was there bringing him down. Also a hit by the tight end for the Saints, Josh Hill, 25-yard return. So Mike Malarkey, who's been a head coach before in the NFL. Before that, he was a longtime NFL tight end. You played with him. He was a teammate of yours. I did, and I have great respect for, for Mike. He's been an offensive coordinator on three different teams, a head coach twice for Buffalo and Jacksonville. He believes in a couple simple concepts, being the tougher team and, and the team that plays with a greater purpose and not doing the little things they get you beat. Boy, that one picture there looked just like Sam White, didn't he? A guy that actually brought Kyle hired him. Yeah, right. Hired him in the NFL. Short drop by Mariota. Outside he goes here for his tight end, Anthony Fasano, who's played with Dallas and Miami and Kansas City. Digs up a quick six right there. He's out just beyond the 30. They've got to open this thing up a little bit offensively. The Titans' first three drives, nine plays, 15 yards, no first downs. There's a reason why you went out and spent the money on Marcus Mario, let this guy play. You know what I mean? I don't want to. I don't. I don't think he can be conservative in a game like this against Drew Brees, or you'll fall behind too quickly. Heisman Trophy winner, number two overall pick of Oregon, second down and five. Oops! Somebody jumped Richardson on that defensive line. Andrews, he'll dance, and then he's uh, sought out and found by Anthony. Stephen Anthony brings him down. So the Tennessee Titans have a new coach. They've lost six straight. They bring Mariota back. Outside, defense number 78. Moved into the neutral zone prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. That's what's starting left defensive end, Bobby Richardson. So Mariota, com yep. Mariota comes back, Rich. Um, but like we said before at the top, Tennessee is still in it because of their weak division, their AFC South division. Yeah, and all they can think about, Kevin, you can't look... They can't look down the road. They just got to find a way to, to get some production out of the offense. As I said, the defense has not been the problem. They've been a top five defense most of the season. They just got their first first down. It's Andrews. And gobbled up on the line by Cameron Jordan uh, to the 39 with a gain of about four on the plate. Let's go to New York and James. Jets stayed low. They did. This is Chris Irie. One yard run. Right off the left side, 14-3. That's off of a Blake Bortles interception. 14-3 Jets. Kevin and Rich. Now we know that Ivory's got a hamstring issue, so it's uh, good that he strikes early in that one. And we know that Blake Bortles throws interceptions. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought Boomer would like that one. <laughs> second, second down and five. Andrews, they want to run the ball. Nice trip up right there. Good play by Michael Mounty, whose dad played in the NFL. In fact, he was a receiver for the Saints back in the late 70s. It's a loss of a yard back to the 39. Kevin, you mentioned they want to run the football. They want to run the football behind that right side. Warmack's a big man at 325 pounds, as is Bell. He's 345 pounds, and that's where a majority of the runs have been right now, behind the right side of that offensive line. Titans now have... Gone 22 consecutive drives without a tie, touchdown. Third down and six here. Here they come, and there goes Mariota up for grabs, and oh, was caught on the deflection by Delaney Walker. Lewis there, a block downfield by Hunter, and a touchdown. What a play! A deflected ball by Keenan Lewis. A terrific block by fellow wide receiver Justin Hunter. And a 61-yard deflected touchdown pass. Mariota 
to their top receiver, Delaney Walker. Well, a little unexpected good fortune. A terrible decision throw by Marcus Mariotti's falling off his back foot. The safety and the corner. Keenan Lewis and Jairus Bird run into each Woo. other, and Delaney Walker is there for the easy <laughs> catch. <laughs> they had gone, tw I just said it, they had gone 22 consecutive offensive drives without a touchdown, and they get one right there. And the terrific Delaney Walker comes up with a touchdown reception, and Tennessee has scored. <laughs> Can't make it up! I know it. Bird and Lewis bobble it. The ricochet to Walker. A good block by Hunter. Just out of our screen there. Go, oh my gosh, what just happened? Breeze with two touchdown passes. Mariota has won Tuesday on CBS. One pill makes him a criminal's worst nightmare and the FBI's greatest asset. Don't miss a new episode of the hit drama Limitless Tuesday at 10, 9 Central only. CBS. Longest play from scrimmage this year by the Tennessee Titans on the 61-yard ricochet reception for a touchdown. Delaney Walker. Sometimes you're better off being lucky <laughs> no, than good. No. That was some kind of play in the ensuing kickoff by Suckup, who himself has scored today on a 51-yard field goal. And it's brought out here by Murphy. And a good tackle made once again by the special teamer Steve Johnson, who also had a punt fumble recovery, 25-yard return. Here's a look at Drew Brees. Well, Drew picked up right where he left off last week, 8 of 10 for 150 yards. He finds his tight end Josh Hill for the first score. And this was a terrific throw. Great air on the football to Brandon Cooks. Right over the top of Parrish Cox. So here we go with Drew Brees. They have a chance to go over 500 for the first time. Kill, kill, kill. With a win today. Record day last week for this offense. Three consecutive wins. Here's the first and ten handoff. They hit out of Alabama. Hit by Sensabaugh and others and brought down also Avery Williamson over there. A gain of two on the play. They've handled adversity, Rich, this New Orleans team has. They began 0-3, and, and Sean Payton started 1-4. of four. But now we'll find out with three consecutive wins how they handle some prosperity. Yeah, they got off to a rocky start, losing their first three, as you point out. But there was no sense of panic, and in a large part because of the play of their offense, they've now won four of the last five. By the way, unbeaten Carolina, who just took care of Indianapolis in overtime this past Monday, leading Green Bay right now. The Packers are coming off a disappointing and bad loss in Denver. Second down. Long way to go here, about nine yards, and uh, they were looking for the twisting receiver, Brandon Coleman, out of Rutgers. Coverage by Sensible, incomplete third and eight. Well, you're seeing a bunch of double moves from the Saints going after these corners. I really think the safeties from the Tennessee Titans are really going to have to play well in this one. You, you can't be too shallow, and you can't get caught flat-footed against Breeze. I mean, you study the tape. What happened last week against the Giants at times, some of their safeties had their heels at 10 yards. You can't do it. You have to get your depth, and you have to make sure you take proper angles. Breeze going into the nickel, third and a long eight. It's picked off on the play, grabbed by Cox, who was beaten for the long touchdown pass moments ago to Cooks. Parrish Cox. And a flag has been thrown back at the 12. If it stands, Cox with his second pick of the year. Personal foul, roughing the pass defense number 97, throwing the quarterback to the ground. Carl Klug. Automatic first down. Wipes it out. Wipe away the pickoff by the Titan D. And you see Klug, he's right on the right side of your screen. I mean, just. Yeah, Ooh, you can't do that. Cannot do that. I mean, it just wasn't necessary. Would have been a huge turnover. The Titans. Saints part of the field. So it's kind of penalty. That's what Mike Malarkey talked to us the last night about. We've got to go out and play smart football. It'll be fundamentally sound on both sides of the ball. First down and ten. Ingram is in the game and gets the call right here. And sticking with it well, Zach Brown, leading tackler, gain of five is what he limits him to to the 41. That's the end of the first quarter from New Orleans on CBS.
They love their Saints here in New Orleans and a look through 15 minutes of football, some numbers. Saints in the NFL number three in time of possession. Here we go, starting the second, second down in five. Ingram, big time lead blocked by the tight end Hill, knocked out of bounds by Seth Brown. Down to the Tennessee 46, gain of 12 by Ingram. Well, look at the left guard, Lolito, and the tight end going to come around and get the kick out. A little power play with Ingram. He's just going to follow the left guard and the tight end up into the second level. A well-executed run for the New Orleans Saints. Well, you're right on that block by Lolito. That was terrific coming from that left guard. First and ten. Ready, you have a lady. Ready. You ready for second. Ingram the Heisman winner. With a block by Ho'o oh, Manawanui and brought down on the play by linebacker Avery Williamson, a gain of one to the 45. And Williamson has played well for them, as has Zach Brown. I, think, I just think the personnel, I think we've seen progress with this defense. Last year they were struggling with the switch from a 4-3 to a 3-4. This year they have better talent and depth on defense. There's Dick LeBeau, who is the assistant head coach on this team, involved with uh, all variety and parts of that defense. Defensive yes, coordinator, long-time defensive coordinator with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Anywhere there's Dick LeBeau, yeah. you can count on a team playing well on defense. And so they're number five overall on defense. Free and pass defense is Tennessee. It's second down nine. Oh, he's got his receiver, Willie Sneed. Brought down by Cox, who may have aggravated that hamstring. He's over there limping. The defensive back for Tennessee in a 32-yard throw. Caught by Sneed out of Ball State. First down, New Orleans. Kevin, we've been talking about double moves, and watch Snead outside. He is going to start inside on the slant. Watch the corner. It's Cox. He jumps on the slant. Safety can't get over there soon enough. Breeze does a nice job pushing Snead back to the sidelines. The bubble, double moves bubble, bubble. have really hurt the Titans' corners. Ready. Ready to Breeze with the first and ten. Pressure up the middle. Jarrell Casey led the charge, finally brought down by Arakpo. As he celebrates by himself, first time that Breeze has been sacked in his last 72 pass attempts, going back to the Colts game on the 25th of October. Well, Casey, Kevin, he's he may be the best player they have on defense. And Sean Payton said he's playing as well as any defensive lineman in the league right now. He shows up everywhere. In the running game, in the passing game, he is a handful inside. That's only the 18th sack allowed by that offensive line. Second down, 14. Breeze with two touchdown passes today. Ready. Ready. Screen. They come again with a screen right here. Looking for blocks. Under through one. A missed tackle by Griffin. Ingram is finally brought down by David Bass inside the five at the three. A catch and run at 13, first and goal, New Orleans. Just keep an eye on Drew Brees. Watch him look this off. He's going to hold the rush. He holds the ball till the very last second, and then he dumps it down to Mark Ingram. And Ingram is a very good screen runner because he's patient. He has great vision, and he'll allow that group to get out in front. And you can see the yards after catch, and as a team, New Orleans is number two in the NFL. In yards after catch, there is a player down. And it's the offensive center, Max Unger, a two-time Pro Bowler who they acquired in a trade with Seattle. And you see in the background, Clemente taking some snaps with Drew Brees. Senio Clemente will replace Unger. How about Brees, Kevin? Nine completions spread out among seven different receivers. This is where he's at his best down in the red zone. 72% completion percentage, which is tops right now in the NFL. Yep, and he's number five in passing yards, number five in touchdown passes so far. We were joking around on Friday. I said about throwing the ball in this part of the field. I was telling him that Peyton Manning has thrown more touchdowns from inside the five-yard line. He just chuckled. Drew's throwing a lot as, as well. First and goal. Pelletti with a high snap. Breeze dancing. And throwing it away, and there's a flag. Casey got him late, and Breeze gets up a little bit wobbly. 
where the penalties on the quarterback have been a killer. Clue got the penalty when they threw the interception. Casey, I beg for your forgiveness. <laughs> Casey's got to pull up those drawers. Yeah, pull up those drawers, young man. <laughs> it's a little bit too much for us here on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. But uh, the thing is, I, I think, you know, Breeze is so good. Here's what's going on. They're setting fouls on the play. Breeze is so good holding on to the ball, waiting for the last second that sometimes those linemen aren't looking at the ball, they're just looking at the quarterback, aren't they, Rich? Yeah, he, he, but he does, the thing about him, Kevin, that the primary's not there, he always knows where his outlet or quick answer throw is. He, he can find you a completion now. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 95. Blocks it. to the goal, first down. Well, they put on Angelo Blackson, but I really thought it was on... Casey. Yeah, it's, Ooh, yeah, yeah. It was Casey. He tried to he tried to pull up. I mean he did. But you you know, all that weight moving forward, Kevin. You just can't stop in a on a dime. I mean, this this is a big man. You gotta give him a you gotta give him a couple yards to slow down. He's he's three hundred and five pounds of twisted steel. <laughs> I was gonna finish it off, but I thought I, I caught myself. <laughs> caught myself. Max Unger comes back in at center. And Calamete is going to be a receiver eligible. He's a eligible guy in the wing. First and goal, and this is Ingram. And looks like he may be stuffed. There's no signal from either side. He did not get in. They held on well. Arakpo and others coming through. Looked like a Daquan Jones making the stop. Well, good penetration. Thought for a second there they might get this one. He's close. Well, he was. Woodyard, too. Got him around the... The way he pulls him right yeah. back. They are close. The Saints have been really good in this part of the field. And now we have a player, I think. Uh oh, Manawanui is either got a bleeding issue or he is a little woozy, and they automatically stop play and bring him out. Oh, yeah, he's got. Something in his eye. In eye. You know, Sometimes these, the stuff from the turf yeah, kicks those up. Those little black pellets, Rich, those yeah. little rubberized pellets. He was just traded to this team, not just, but recently traded by New England here. And he would start as a fullback and an H-back and a tight end with the Patriots and doing the same kind of role here. Peyton and Belichick a lot alike in a lot of ways, aren't they? Yeah, and I think he gives them position versatility. I mean, you mentioned, Kevin, he can line up in the backfield. He can be an inline player, smart do the right thing. There's something to be said about players who do the right thing in critical situations. Second goal, how quick was that, huh? Quarterback Breeze, one yard, touchdown, quarterback sneak, and his third touchdown of the day. Two through the air and on the ground, Breeze. And the Saints are next to their lead to 10 with the extra point in waiting. Watch his vertical jump. This is amazing. Look at this. <laughs> And you, you, people wonder why he is such a good thrower of the football. It's his core strength and his lower body strength. He works on those. He a lot, works huh? on them all the time. He's not so concerned about throwing around the weights with his chest and shoulders, but he really makes sure, Kevin, he gets after it during the season, taking care of his legs and his core. Ralph Snead had a 32-yard reception. Ingram had a 12-yard run and a 13-yard pass reception. Brees takes it over on a leap. And the extra point makes it 21 to 10. New Orleans. Breeze is on fire. Saints with touchdown drives today of 72, 79, and 80 yards. And Breeze catapults up. Another good looking drive by Drew Breeze. One yard touchdown leap. It's amazing, Kevin. You just look at Brees and how he's played so far here in the first half, 11 of 14, a couple of touchdowns. He understands where to go with the ball every snap. In fact, in most cases, he knows where to go with the football before the snap. Forbath will be kicking off. They're not morsed it. They just signed Forbath not too long ago, releasing... Zach Hocker, Dexter McCluster. He'll take it from the goal line for the Tennessee Titans. And uh, submarining and making the stop on the play. 
T.J. Graham, 23-yard return. Week 9 continues later today on CBS and for some of you on Fox. Then tonight with Sunday Night Football on NBC and tune in tomorrow. Monday Night Football on ESPN and Westwood One Radio. First down and 10. Beautiful dome here in downtown New Orleans with NFL MVP Rich Gannon, Kevin Harlan. Two touchdown passes by Breeze. One 61-yarder and a ricochet to Walker from Mariota. Back after missing two games with an MCL sprain. First and 10. Good time. Lewan with a good block at the tackle. And here's Andrews with a nice fake and a move on Hoffman. Finally, it's Bird bringing him down. It's a catch and run to the 46 and a gain of 23 on first down. Really nice decision by Marcus Mariota. Trying to throw the ball down the field. It's really a two-man route. It is not there. And it, when it's not there, he does the next best thing. He comes right down to his running back, Antonio Andrews. It's a good alert play by the young quarterback. Andrews, the leading rusher for this Tennessee team, averaging about 3-7 a game. 3.7 yards per carry a game, and he's got to run it down the offset eye with the first and 10. Walston is back here. Andrews. Byron Bull with a block, and that opens the door. And look at Andrews gallop downfield inside the 20-yard line of New Orleans against the number 30 defense, the number 25 ranked defense against the run. A 38-yard run and a first down for Tennessee. Look at the right guard and right tackle. They're just going to wash out right here. They just wash out the three technique. And look at this cut by the back. Really nice job. They have worked long and hard this week on the inside running game. It started on Wednesday. It continued on Thursday and Friday. This is a priority for the Titans. Good move. Clinton Bell with the right tackle. Greater block right there. It's McCluster in with the first and ten. A Hawthorne tackle from the linebacking core to the 13-yard line and a gain of two. And this is what you got to find out. you got to find out about this offensive line, Kevin, and some of the changes that you've made. And they've got to be a physical football team in the running game. And for them to win, they've got to win at the line of scrimmage. Second down and eight. They've been searching for an identity. Sano's in the backfield playing fullback. Mariota blocked by Fasano, tipped pass. Delaney Walker at the five, and maybe to the four. Let's put him at the three. Walker gets his second ricochet, his second deflected reception today. That's a good gain of 12. A really nice route and pretty good coverage underneath by Malti. Again, some, some good fortune. Delaney Walker. Monty replacing Humber, who's injured. That's the guy I'm going to be looking for, Kevin. Look at Delaney Walker. Leads the team in receptions. We don't say that very often in this league when we look at the tight end position. Andrews in. The fake to him. Wide, wide open. Delaney Walker. They take care with Jamarcus Sanford getting beat. It's a two yard touchdown pass. The second of the day, <laughs> and a smile to the face of Mike Malarkey, his quarterback, Mariota, with another throw. Yeah, I mean, just real simple. He's just going to go to the corner. Didn't I just say that? I'd find the tight yeah. end in this part of the field, you Delaney sure Walker. Did. They don't even cover him. I mean, he's leading the team in receptions. What am I missing here? <laughs> he's got 35 catches coming into today's game. He's the guy you got to stop down in the red zone. Great play action fake, though. Gets it done. Walker spent seven years in San Francisco. Came to Tennessee in 2013. Here is the suck-up extra point. He has never missed an extra point in his career. And continues that way, making it 21-17. Missing a couple games with a sprained MCL. The Heisman Trophy winner, Mariota, with his second touchdown pass today to the reliable Walker. Well, you're taking a look inside the National World War II Museum here in New Orleans, and November is the NFL's Salute to Service Month, and before today's game, the victory bells of the World War II Museum sang the national anthem. 
wonderful tribute. You see the camouflage headsets and other gear worn by coaches on the sideline today. No camouflage, but Tennessee has come out to do. They're letting Mariota go after it, and Delaney Walker has had a terrific day. Three catches, 75 yards, two touchdown receptions. Here comes the rookie Murphy on the kickoff and the eventual tackle made by Cody Riggs on a 35-yard kickoff return by Marcus Murphy. In honor of Veterans Day, for every point scored during the NFL's 32 Salute to Service games, the NFL will donate $1,000 to its nonprofit partners, the Pat Tillman Foundation, the USO, and the Wounded Warrior Project. To join the salute and learn more, visit NFL.com slash salute. Thank them for all they do for us. First and ten, Spiller got tripped up by Casey. Staggers ahead for three to the 33. You mentioned Marcus Mariota, Kevin. Started 0 for 4. Since then, he's gone 5 for 5 with two touchdowns. He's found his rhythm against this New Orleans defense. If New Orleans is going to make it to the postseason, they need better play out of their defense. They that's, do. That's been the thorn in their side through the first eight games. There's the offense. They have looked uh, very, very good. They fumbled a punt return. Murphy did. In a game where they've lost to Kyrie Robinson the week before to a broken leg in surgery this week. Tim Hightower is up and active for the team. Second seven now. And Brees going deep and nobody home. His receiver stopped. That was Snee with the coverage by Griffin. The Raiders, the Steelers, to New York, James and Boomer. And this time, it's the Raiders. JB, it's ACDC, Derek Carr to Amari Cooper. It's like Rich Gannon and Tim Brown all over again. Raiders take the lead, 14-11 over the Steelers late in the second quarter. Wow, flashbacks with Gannon and Brown, huh? Back to Kevin Harlan. Cooper's first catch in the red zone all season long for the Raiders. Uh, forget Cooper. How about Gannon to Brown? <laughs> I love it, Boomer. <laughs> now, the Raiders are Boomer. back. I mean, will this game mean something between the Raiders and the Steelers? That's awesome. Third down, seven. Great time. Broken up. Now they're going to call a flag there on Sensabaugh. They were going for Brandon Cooks. That Cooks. Breeze connection has been key. Wonderful chemistry. As Breeze develops young receivers, Rich, really, uh, Marcus Colston, the only holdover. Gone is Graham, gone is Lance Moore. The familiar names you've seen for so long. Here. Quite a bit of change around the quarterback, Kevin. You're right. For, for seven straight years, he had the same four guys at wide receiver Colston, Henderson, Moore, and Meacham. Now it's Sneed and Cooks and Coleman. And they don't know all the subtle nuances. And Drew Brees doesn't assume anything with these young receivers. Remember, Cooks got injured early last season, so this is kind of like the first full-bodied season they've worked together. There is no foul on the play. Four count. That'll drive Sean Payton to drink. Look at <laughs> I mean, honestly, you, you throw a flag, and then you pick it up and say there's no, no I don't. I never understood that. You throw it, and then you say, well, maybe it wasn't a foul. Sean in his ninth year with the New Orleans Saints. Five playoff appearances, two NFC Championship games, a Super Bowl, Coach of the Year. So they got a punt. Three and punt for New Orleans. Morstead. A cluster. Glad it brought down there. Ryan Dixon, a cornerback, gets him. Seven-yard return, 45-yard punt. The return of Mariota has been a good one for the Tennessee Titans. He's got two touchdown passes today. Tomorrow on CBS, why be ordinary when it's your destiny to be super? Don't miss a new episode of the hit drama Supergirl. Tomorrow, 8, 7 Central, only... CBS, another possession for the Tennessee Titans. One and six, loses of six straight against the ascending New Orleans Saints. Number 29, Mariota, a cluster. And runs into a cluster. And he picks up about four on the play. Well, you look at Delaney Walker so far. He's been in the right place at the right time. I mean, you know, he didn't even see this ball until it gets tipped by Bird. And, of course, another one. A little bit of serendipity, of course. A 61-yard touchdown followed up by that last one from two yards. Marcus Mariota follow, follow, following 
the tight ends. Nine pass attempts, only one to a wide receiver for the Titans. It's McCluster on second down and six. And falling on him there, Kevin Williams, the 35-year-old multiple all-pro defensive lineman. It is a gain of four. He's up to the 37. They're trying to find some rhythm in the running game, and it's been Antonio Andrews. Bishop Sankey is a guy that hasn't had a carry, Kevin, in two and a half weeks. Can you believe that? He's a, he a second-round pick, pick yeah. last year. Amazing. Out of Washington, uh, third and two. Here comes the rush, and there goes the ball. Edibali was coming right into the grill of the quarterback, Mariota, and that's a sign of growth to throw it away and take the punt. Yeah, really nothing there, and the Saints do a terrific job with their coverage. You see the play-action fake away. They're trying to sneak McCluster out. They cover that. They cover Walker on the crosser. Red Kern will punt. Deep back for the Saints will be Marcus Murphy. He has a punt return touchdown this year, 74 yards against Carolina. Woo, he gets off a rocket. Murphy wisely lets it bounce it back, and that's what you're supposed to do, and it takes a great Tennessee bounce. Retrieved on the play by Marqueston Huff. 55-yard, well-placed current punt. Here comes Breeze. Here come the Saints up 21-17. Mardi Gras World, Mardi Gras Museum here in New Orleans. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, JB, Tony, Bart Boomer, and Coach Cower for the news and scores and highlights you want. And they'll preview Thursday Night Football only on NFL Network. That's all coming up from our CBS studios in New York on the Verizon Halftime Report with a look at Sean Payton. That relationship between play caller and quarterback is something special in New Orleans. They've been together since day one back in 2006. Ingram is in, first and ten, blocked by Watson, and a gain to the 11 on a gain of three. You use the word synchronicity in the relationship between Peyton and Breeze. Yeah, I think that it's certainly you could, it's a good, de good description of their relationship. You know, I think they have something special, and I, I've only had that once in my 17-year career, Kevin. You look at what they have done together, and uh, you know, they have so many different conversations and discussions during the week about the game plan, some by way of text messages. Every play is diagnosed and discussed. It's that, it's that type of attention to detail. Second down, seven, a handoff to Andrew, and swallowed on that line. Daquan Jones, allowing a gain of one. The kind of relationship that you had with John Gruden in Oakland. Yeah, it doesn't come around all that often. I just think that Sean Payton and Drew Brees are very similar. I think that, you know, both have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. Sean... You know, played at uh, Eastern Illinois, was a replacement player. Drew didn't get recruited by Texas, had to go to Purdue. Yeah, wasn't from a, Austin, right? Wasn't yeah, a exactly. first-round draft exactly. pick. And I think they, that they, you know, they're, they're similar size guys, undersized guys, but they they just, they take great pride in their preparation and performance each week. And, and neither one of them wants to let the other one down. I think that's pretty awesome. Tennessee's loaded their secondary with five. It's third down and six. What a catch! That's Benjamin Watson. He's having a career year. He just picks up a 19-yard diving reception. He's almost 35. He's playing like he's 25, and he just gives the Saints a first down. What a great route by the tight end. I mean, he's just going to go right up the seam. And I mentioned that word complete tight end. We don't use that term much anymore, but it's true with Watson. He's their best blocker. He's the best route runner, and he has great hands. It makes people forget a little bit about Jimmy Graham, doesn't it, on first and ten here with a... Another handoff up the middle. To gouge that defense with a gain of four. And the run right there for four yards to the 34. Well, he has certainly picked up the slack. And you just look at his numbers uh, this season. Uh, not a lot of difference there. I think Jimmy misses New Orleans a little bit. He's been lost in that offense out there in Seattle. But, you know, Benjamin Watson, you look at his numbers and... Yeah, and as I said, I said before, he's a he's a willing blocker, and you don't say that too often about tight ends, especially in this offense. Ingram had the previous game, second down, six. Streep with a good block at the right tackle. Ingram up the middle, and he is devoured by Wesley Woodyard. Gain of five, flag is down. That game should have stand near the 40-yard line. Holding, offense number 72. 
10 yard penalty. Replay second That's down. Teron Armstead, who we were talking about at the top of the broadcast. Yeah, he's right here. I don't know. I just, I just, I thought it was a pretty good block. He just gets him, and then he just throws him down. It's, yeah, a wreck almost fell off his own horse. I don't know. Yeah. Such a good block, they called him for holding. That Armstead, he, he is a special player. You may recall when he was coming out of Arkansas Pine Bluff, he ran the fastest 40 time of an offensive lineman That's ever, right. ever recorded at the combine. It's a good nugget. What, what we throw? I knew you were there. Let's I had a pressure. He was second down 16. They need the 41. Breeze, Watson, they out uh, about the 35 yard line. We had the tackle made by Zach Brown, gain of 10. Just a little hank route. They referred to that in the West Coast verbiage as a hank route when he just hooks up over the football. Hank, why hank? Hank for hook. H, hank for hook. I See? Like they are, all these things, they're not just numbers. I there's mean, reasons. All got a, yeah, yeah there's they all have, there's a reason for the madness. And the, I think the history of the offense is always fascinating. Why you call plays in certain situations. But again, Kevin, the fact that Drew and Sean have been together for so long makes a world of difference. Two-minute warning. Another sellout here on a rainy day in Louisiana at the Dome. Saints have two timeouts. Titans have three. It is now third down and six. Sneed with a couple third down receptions today. Let's see where they go here. Here comes the internal pressure. Now, Brees is not trying to just get this ball out. He's going to try and take a shot. Special, special, special. And what? He's going to try and block him up and take a shot. Spiller out of the backfield. Spiller will get the call. Chased by Arakpo. Nice job by Tennessee's defense. And Brian Arakpo limiting him to a gain of three and forcing another, a second consecutive New Orleans punt. Well, Kevin, this is what he saw. He saw the internal pressure. He wanted to block it up. He just tries to get the one-on-one -on -one with the back on Arakpo. And Brian Arakpo does a really nice job making the adjustment and the tackle on the boundary. Plus, it stops the clock and they don't have to use a timeout. Morstead, one of the best. Six plays, punt for New Orleans. But cluster out of bounds with the ball. Inside the 20, 46-yard punt. Well, we began the broadcast telling you that at 1-6, the Tennessee Titans are closer to first place in their division than the 4-4 four four New Orleans Saints are in theirs. But what a volatile, turbulent year it's been. Pat Hamilton gone in Indianapolis. All the quarterback changes in Houston. A big part of it, Kevin, has been the, the problems with the quarterback. Luck is up there in Indianapolis getting guys fired. They can't decide on the quarterback in, in use in the first five, six weeks of the season. Bortles is still struggling as a young player. And, of course, you've got a rookie quarterback that missed a couple games. Mettenberger stepped in. He's 0-8 as a starter. First and 10, a twisting and turning. McCluster at the 23. Gain of seven on the play. So hard to win in this business when you don't have that quarterback. That's why the Titans went out and drafted Marcus Mariota. I guess the big question I have is how's this coaching change going to affect him down the road? Second and three, they're going for their receiver, the rookie out of Oklahoma, Green Beckham, who began at Missouri and was a force after being the number one high school kid in the country, then ran a foul off the field. They let him go. He goes to OU, never plays for Oklahoma. He's a good looking, yeah. he's a good looking receiver. I mean, six foot five, 237 pounds. He can run. He just got to learn to to detail his work, he's got to learn to become a better route runner at this level. I told you Kendall Wright is out as a receiver. Mariota does not have a completion to a receiver today. Third down and three. Good block by McCluster. And there's Walker, ever reliable, brought down by the rookie Anthony. He picks up 10 on third and three. He works his way to the 35-yard line. We start using those timeouts here. Yep. How about Walker? He's the only guy he's thrown it to. He's the only guy. You better start covering him up the Saints. Maybe the only guy he trusts. LeJuan with a good block at the left tackle. Nice backpedaling reception by Harry Douglas. And they're familiar with him here in New Orleans. The former Falcon picks up 30. And that is a first down. They'll take it to the 35-yard line of the Saints. Tennessee uses their first timeout. Big completion to Harry Douglas. So Harry Douglas 
who's had a rib issue and missed the last two games, comes up with a 30-yard reception in field goal range here. First and 10, Mariota. Good footwork and on the move. Bad knee and all, and the cluster hurdling a defender and down to the 14-yard line. Brought down by Anthony, and he picks up 21 on the play with an acrobatic move. Really nice throw there, moving to his left, throwing back across his body to McCluster for the first down. The offense has awakened for the Tennessee Titans. They come in number 31 today. Draw play, handoff, and the corkscrew move by McCluster. And a gain of two. Kenny Vaccaro coming through and making the stop. Was it a fumble? The ball was loose, and so they have it. And now the ensuing discussion among our officials. Talking about whether or not he was down. We are inside judge. two minutes. Well, that comes out. Did he land on a body? Huh? Question is, was his forward progress? The rule on the field was a fumble recovered by the defense for a first down New Orleans. McCluster, the fumble this Titan team comes in, number 28 in turnovers. They're minus seven in the giveaway takeaway. Keep an eye on Hawthorne. He's going to come in there and put his helmet right on the football and knock it out. That ball's clearly on the ground. That is an NFL best fifth red zone takeaway by the New Orleans defense. And Vaccaro was the one to wrestle him down. And just the one positive, Kevin, you talk about this defense. This time last year, they had just two takeaways on defense. This year, they already have 13 and five as you said, have come in the red zone. Isn't that something? 13 now, Rich, and 17 all of last year. You, you, you find out that's a pretty good statistic to follow, isn't well, it? Well, really? it's been a point of emphasis with Sean Payton, with Rob Ryan, a defensive coordinator. They work on ball extraction every day in practice. All right, coming up in the Verizon Halftime Report, JB and Company scores news, highlights all over the NFL, plus a preview of Thursday Night Football on NFL Network. It's the Verizon Halftime Report. Drew Brees is going to take his team to halftime with the kneel down. That'll take us to the half. Brees with two touchdown passes, one of 38 yards, one of 10 yards, and a one-yard touchdown vault. And Marcus Mariota with a 61-yard touchdown pass to Walker and a two-yard touchdown pass to Walker. I don't think a lot of people saw this score coming, but Mariota has sparked the offense for the Titans, who come in one and six against the four and four New Orleans Saints. That's the end of the first half. We'll take a break in the Verizon Halftime Report. You're watching the NFL on CBS, the home to Super Bowl 50. On the deflection by Delaney Walker, and a touchdown! What a play! Walker has caught two touchdown passes today. Breeze has thrown a couple touchdown passes and vaulted in on the quarterback sneak. That is what we've got going on so far. Who are you loving? Presented by McDonald's. Game time gold. Mariota and Walker connecting on a 61-yarder, which keeps the Titans close as we go to the second half. Walker's been terrific. Kevin Harlan, Rich Gannon, thanks for joining us here from rainy New Orleans. Uh, new coach, six straight losses, uh, Titans playing pretty well. Yeah, I'm not surprised, Kevin, to see them respond. A lot of adversity when you lose your head coach. This team has some passion. They really came out in the first half and played with great energy and enthusiasm. What about adjustments, Rich, in the second half? Well, I think when you look at the Tennessee Titans, I mean, they've got to keep the mix offensively. I think it's been good. 12 runs, 15 passes. Marcus has been pretty efficient. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. I think defensively, the corners have to play better, in, partic in particular Paris Cox. He's already been beaten twice. And, of course, Drew Brees, keep, keep the pedal to the metal. 14 of 19, 232 yards and a couple touchdowns. I think defensively, this is a Tennessee offensive line, Kevin, to get up seven sacks last week. So far for the Saints, they haven't gotten a sniff. They have to do a better job getting some pressure on the rookie quarterback. So for Brees and the New Orleans Saints, they've won three consecutive games. A chance to get to 500 with the win today for the first time this season. Coming off that record day offensively 
with seven touchdown passes and over 500 passing yards a week ago against the Giants. How would they handle the success that they've recently had after beginning the season? 0-3, our second half with Marcus Murphy taking it out, the rookie out of Missouri. And he goes up to near the 20-yard line with a 23-yard return. Bass makes the stop, and through 30 minutes of football, here are the numbers. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see the Saints put up 265 yards, but how about the Titans, Kevin? 240 yards in the first half. This is after going four straight games with less than 300 yards of total offense. So for Tennessee, the new coach, Ken Wisenhunt, who had only been on the job for a year and a half and has three and a half years remaining on a long-term contract with a lot of money. Mike uh, Malarkey, who is taken over as an interim head coach. He was the tight end associate head coach. With his Tennessee team coming in with six consecutive losses. Welcoming him back, Mariota. So here we go, beginning the second half, and Breeze with the first and ten. Ingram looking to wheel outside, and not a whole lot there with a gain of four in the tackle by Avery Williamson and the tackle at the 25. When you look at the possessions, I mean, they got on the roll there, and then they kind of cooled off a little bit. A couple, one, three, and out. But I do know this, the Saints offense, you look at the first drive in the second half, they have scored five in five straight games. They usually come out of the, of the half and make some adjustments and put together a nice drive. In the second down and five, Ingram. Someone lost their helmet. That was Casey. Before he almost lost his drawers. There's a gain of four. He's up to the 29-yard line. Lolito was uh, blocking ahead of him on that guard. Let's see, I don't know if it's the back that does it or no, it's the it's Lolito. Gets that hand up in there and knocks the helmet off of Jarrell Casey. The play of this offensive line of New Orleans has been a big story. One of the reasons why they've won three in a row. Yeah, they're doing a good job, Kevin. I think they, you, know, you look at them, they particularly their the ability to protect the pass. They're really trying to plow with a third and one in an Ingram run and trying to get out to the 30 and maybe shy. He is shy. Yeah. So the defense holds. We know this is a terrific Ray Horton coached Tennessee Titan defense. Number five overall. That's a big stop. It that is. is a huge stop for that Tennessee defense. Daquan Jones, Arakpo all had a hand in stopping Ingram and they're going to punt three plays. Well, look at the penetration. You look at, you mentioned Daquan Jones, Casey up in there, Griffin, the strong safety. He's up in there, the free safety. Thomas Morstead, who is the all-time Saints leader in gross attack. He has to roll, and he'll bounce. After taking an initial shot from Brian Dixon, a defensive back, Dixon felt that. It was a 43-yard punt. There was a five-yard return. Mariota will get it again. Kraken helmets in the dome today. Early third on CBS. It's the first play of the second half for the Tennessee Titans. Their defense just forced a free and punt for Breeze and the Saints. Mariota. Andrews in the backfield. Go outside. It is caught by Justin Hunter. No Kendall Wright today. He's injured. Gain of five right there. Well, they got off to a rocky start, Kevin. I hate these three and outs. But then they got on a roll. You look there in the third possession, third, fourth, and fifth possession, some scores. And I think they really went into the locker room with some confidence. They're just down by four. They get a good stop with their defense, a three and out. Now the Titans have good field position to start the second half. The cluster is in, second down and six. Boy, they came right at the quarterback, but a nice tumble and touch made by Green Beckham, who picks back up, springs his way past midfield and takes a pile to the 49 on a 14-yard short throw and a big game. Yeah, they only can block Anthony. This is a really nice job, though, by Marcus Mariota. He's going to fake the ball. Watch how quickly he gets this out of his hands with some pressure in his face. That was one thing he said, you noticed the release, his quick release is something. And that's what Mike Malarkey told us last night. He has no problem getting that grip and getting the ball out quickly. Andrews back in, first and ten. Antonio Andrews. Trying to go outside, nice tackle made by Michael Bottu. 
Well, after really struggling last week, I'm not surprised to see them make really a number of changes along the offensive line, left guard, center. Byron Bell goes from left guard to right tackle, and I think the right side, Warmack and Bell, that's a nice combination, Kevin. They really have run the ball well there. And last week, they gave up seven sacks to the Houston Texans. Not a single sack through the first. That was the second seven-sack game they've given up this year. Second down nine. There's a block by the running back and a catch downfield, and they go once again to the angular green back of 20-yard pickup, flag down at the 42-yard line. Green Beckham just caught one for 14. Illegal contact. Defense number 32. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is the first time. 32 is Kenny Vaccaro in the secondary for the Saints. A good look at the ISO. Browner actually in pretty good position. He's going to grab right at the end. He needs to learn to keep his hands to himself. He's yeah. been penalized 15 times already this season, which is five more than his closest offender. How about that? Is, is that Xavier Rhodes, right? I'm yep, up in Minnesota, you're yeah. right. On the 28, first and 10, Andrews in. Antonio. Oh, he got good blocks. One from the fullback, the rookie, and a game down to the 18-yard line. He's hit by a couple, including Bird, close to a first down. Charleston Fowler with a nice block. The rookie out of Alabama, he was the lead fullback on that run. This is Antonio Brown, Kevin. He doesn't go down easy. I'm sorry, Antonio Andrews. He doesn't go down easy. You just watch him and what he has done. He really came out of nowhere, undrafted out of Western Kentucky. Look at the production he had there and certainly caught the attention of the scouts of the Tennessee Titans. He was a high school quarterback in Kentucky. In fact, he was the state's Mr. Football. Second down and one. Andrews blocked by Warmack. Oh, with a good read on it right there is Stephen Anthony. He is the first round pick and a rookie out of Clemson and leads all rookies in the NFL and tackles. He limits him to no gain on the play. Well, he's a tackling machine in the middle of that defense. He started every game as a rookie and he, as you said, he leads a team with tackles. He had a career high 21 stops last week against the Giants. In fact, he leads all rookies in the National Football League in tackles. Mass substitutions now defensively for New Orleans. McCluster is in for Mariota. Third and one, but they can't get lined up. The quarterback takes a bad wheel and all, and he goes for a first down on a slide of five to the 14-yard line of New Orleans. Move the chains. Well, they're really going to fool the, the defensive end. I mean, we talk about plays that look the same that are different. Remember they threw that that pass off this very same action a couple plays ago. Now they fake it to the back, and Marcus keeps it out the back door. This is his, Rich, first real true road game in an NFL situation in a dome. And he's really done a terrific job, Kevin. You consider they've got a new play caller, new mechanics to get the play in, and how he has handled the crowd noise. It's been very impressive. Eighth play of the drive, Andrews. A block by Bell, but then nice defensive work by Stephen Anthony. Gain of two down to the 12. Well, look at the look at the, look at the push they get up front. This offensive line has really played well. You know how hard they've worked with all the changes that, they, that they've made. Doing a nice job getting off the ball and getting up on the second level. You know, the starting center today, Gallic, he is a rookie. Bell, a fifth-year player with a lot of starts when he played four years at Carolina. Lawan is a second-year player, but missed last year a lot of it with an injury. Missed last six games, second down and eight. Looking across the middle. Green Beckham may have gotten tangled. There was a lot of congestion in there, and they may have been going for the rookie out of Oklahoma. Incomplete third and eight coming up now for Mariota. A lot of traffic in there. This is where he's going to have to make his money, third and eight. You know, I think one of the toughest challenges for a rookie quarterback, Kevin, is, is the complexities of defense. You know, in the college, you see just a handful of different fronts and coverages, fairly vanilla, but in the NFL, especially on third down, you get the whole kitchen sink, especially with a defensive coordinator like Rob Ryan. Watch for Walker. He's got a couple third down receptions today. Mariota. 
That's the other tight end, Craig Stevens, who is belted on the play. Kenny Vaccaro limits him to a gain of a yard, just outside the 10. And so the Titans will try for three. Well, Kenny Vaccaro's done a really nice job as a safety. I mean, he's a terrific tackler. He's a missile, isn't he? Huh? He is. He, and he is more comfortable down around the line of scrimmage where there's action. So the Tennessee Titans getting a 14-yard and a 20-yard completion to Green Beckham. All the things they're going through. A new coach, six straight losses. Quarterback is back, the rookie. But they're still in it. 29-yard field goal try here by Suckup. He had one earlier from 51. He drills one right there from 29. We have a one-point game in New Orleans halfway through the third on CBS. Voodoo Museum here in New Orleans. Lots to see. Lots to be. I'll tell you what, some kind of lucky chicken foot there for Mariota today. Never miss a moment of football action with the CBS Sports app. Every play and score, every game and every highlight, right as they happen. Download the CBS Sports app now at cbsports.com slash mobile. Kevin Harlan, Rich Gannon, and our terrific CBS crew. In fact, our director today from Baton Rouge, Mark Grant, who is uh, known in these parts. He does the Saints preseason. As a director, he's with us today. One-point game, third quarter from New Orleans. One of those drives you see right there was a kneel down at halftime, but otherwise, I mean, look at it. It's, it's uh, been a tightening of the screws defensively for the Titans. Defensively. Well, not a lot of individual stars on that defense, but it's a unit they fit and play well together within the scheme. First and ten, play action. It's the tight end Hill. He's forced out of bounds by linebacker Wesley Woodyard. Hill caught a touchdown pass earlier in the game. Runs right there for the catch for 11. Has a first down to the 31. Look at their struggles. The Saints, they've had some poor field position their last four drives, their own eight, their own 13. Last two at the 20-yard line. Tough to go 80 yards in this business against a good defense like the Titans. First and 10. What's that mean, Rich? Hey, it changed the play at the line of scrimmage. A run to pass. The first and ten. Ingram block and they go outside. Sneed is there, but wrestled down quickly on the play by Damian Stafford. It is a gain of seven on the play after the 38. So many of their plays, Kevin, as you point out, you hear the kill kill from Drew. So that play call will come in and there'll be a bunch of tags to it. In other words, they could call a strong side run and kill it to a weak side run. They could call a strong side run and kill it to a play action shot. So Drew has a lot of flexibility and freedom at the line of scrimmage because of his, his experience in this system. Second and three. Ready. Nice one right there by Ingram. Works his way for a first down. He was tackled in the secondary by Susi, the former Buffalo Bill. It is a gain of four to the 42. I just, I think Sean Payton may be the best play caller in the game right now. He does such a terrific job game planning each week, putting players in a position to be successful. And, and it starts with a quarterback. And it helps that they have such a long history together. They really know what each other's thinking. First and ten. Here comes Klug. There goes Breeze. Deep downfield. Griffin knocks Brandon Coleman out of bounds. He caught the ball at the 30-yard line. Picks up 28 with a Saints first down. Now he just, this is a great example of the arm strength of a quarterback like Drew Brees. Kim, this is a hard throw. You've got Klug chasing you down the field. He just whips this thing up and down. And he's got to get it over at Sensaba and in between the corner and the safety. Griffin takes a poor angle. First and 10. Quickly dumps it outside. There's Benjamin Watson, tackled by Brown. And uh, at the 21, nine-yard game. Was he in bounds when he caught this? And no. no. Well, I don't know. That's hard. And they didn't give him a chance. They jumped yeah. the ball so quickly that they never gave the Tennessee coaching staff a chance to review that upstairs. Well, you just said Breeze is smart. Boy, he got that team huddled. And Doesn't waste line. any time. There's a sense of urgency with this offense. Second down and one. Ingram. Woodyard came to the side, brought him down, picks up two, gets the first down. You, you like what Breeze does at practice and before games, and he goes through his rotation even though he's just practicing. Yeah, Kevin, I saw him do something in practice on Friday, which I don't think I've ever seen another quarterback do. He's actually, he'll throw the ball 
and then he'll go back and look at where the second and third receiver in the progression is. So he's e even he's, he's always taking mental reps each play in practice. It's amazing to watch this guy work on a Friday. We got Oki. We got Oki. Good. Mike five four. We're to work. Mike five four. Ready. Ready. The second. First and ten. Again, Breeze hit and brought down on the play by Woodyard. Wesley Woodyard, the former Denver Bronco. Second sack, loss of 11. Back to the 30. Well, they get him with the middle dog cross. You're going to see the, the internal pressure. They do a good job initially. Ingram's going to step up and block Woodyard, but not long enough. He does a good job disengaging and getting the sack on Drew Breeze. Woodyard last year led Tennessee in tackles. Second season with the Titans. Second down, 21 now for Breeze. Going deep for Ingram. Intercepted and picked off on the play by Stafford. Oh, make it B.W. Webb. B.W. Webb, who has just signed off the practice squad, makes the pick. A former Cowboy fourth round reception uh, rookie makes the grab right there. Rainy day in New Orleans with NFL Mobile streaming live local Sunday afternoon primetime games at NFL Red Zone right on your mobile device. Learn more at NFL.com slash mobile. B.W. Webb called up off the practice squad last night. A former fourth round pick by the Cowboys. He's played at Pittsburgh. He was released, signed in, and he is playing because Parrish Cox is injured. Hurting his hamstring, first and ten, faked him a cluster, low they go, scooped in by Green Beckham, incomplete, hit the turf, second down and ten. Parrish Cox, who had missed some time back the last couple games with a hamstring issue, was struggling and out, and so B.W. Webb took his place. They're already without Jason McCourty, without Bleedy Ray Wilson, so they're down in numbers. And they went right after him, didn't they? Yes, they did. Second down and ten. Andrews tripped up. Not much. Gain of two to the 22. Well, this is a decision that I'm sure Drew Brees would like to have back. Kevin, really too deep coverage. He's actually throwing this to a to a running back, Mark Ingram. He never really feels the safety nor does he feel Webb continue to run with the receiver. Poor decision by Drew Brees, especially in that part of the field. Third down eight. Well, look at the pressure. Here they come. Mariota overshoots Walker. With the coverage on the play by Brandon Browner. And Tennessee, who just picked off Breeze, will punt. you got to beat man-to-man -man coverage. The Saints are going to play high percentage of man-to-man, -man, especially on third down. You see the, the grab right there, and he gets away with it. There's our guy, Brandon Browner. He's going to grab Delaney Walker, and the official misses it at the line of scrimmage. Murphy is back. Brett Kern to punt. But Kern's the all-time leading Titan, gross, and net punter. Murphy. From the 30-yard line. End time of 4-7-8. Tripped up, brought down on the play. But Bo Brinkley got him. Here comes Breeze, who just threw a pick. Timeout, New Orleans. On Tuesday, St. players took time out of their game preparation schedule and joined cadets from the New Orleans Military Maritime Academy in playing video games against troops currently deployed overseas. Those are the heroes right there, folks. In the pros versus G.I. Joes. Breeze, first and ten after the three and out by Tennessee. Underneath, on the cross, Ingram. Sense of awe is there. Zach Brown with the tackle. Gain of 10. First down, 48-yard line. The play action has been good for the Saints on first down. And a lot of times, found the running backs. 
play action kind of takes some of the heat off of that pass rush, especially on the early downs. We're going to call it a game of nine. So just outside the 47, second down and one. It's Spiller, who was lassoed by Cody Riggs. Gain of five, first down to the 49. Here's James, here's Boomer with the Raiders and the Steelers. The young, hot Raiders. They are. How about Derek Carr? He's going to throw a 36-yard completion to Seth Roberts down to the one-yard line. Going to lead to a one-yard touchdown pass to Clyde Wolpert. This game is all tied up. Back and forth they go in Pittsburgh. Kevin and Rich. What a great game there. Yeah, it's, I give Jack Del Rio give him a lot of credit. He's really changed the culture and the environment in Oakland in a short period of time. First and ten handoff right there, right to the group of waiting Titans on a gain of a yard on the play and the run by Ingram, who's been very important for coach Sean Payton. Ingram is 10th in rushing yards coming in, Rich. He's number four in the NFL in total yards from scrimmage so far. And you move him all over the place. You'll see him right now at the top of the screen. Oop, somebody moved, and Watson is quickly across the line. False start, offense, number 72. Five-yard penalty, still second down. We're going to get two guys, really. You get two for the price of one. You get the left <laughs> tackle and Watson. They're going to jump together. <laughs> It's the, the mistakes in critical situations. And a lot Very of, uncharacteristic for the Saints. You want those players looking at your mouth in that hole, whether you're a home team or the way Absolutely. Home. Communication is so important. Second down, 14. Underneath Watson. Out of the 43. There's another Hank. Yep, there's another Hank. The tackle was made by Brown. Jack Brown. Gain of 10 on the play to the 43 of Tennessee. Well, I just talk about this little Hank route. Right over the ball, Kevin. And watch how it just clears out. The Titans playing some zone coverage, and Watson does a nice job hooking up right in front of that linebacker. This Watson among tight ends, Rich, number four in tight end receptions, number five in tight end receiving yards. Third and four. Caught right here, first down. With Sissy making the stop. It was grabbed by Marcus Colston. It was his second catch of the day. It's a gain of eight and a first down as our third quarter concludes. We're going to start the fourth quarter. Both quarterbacks have been stars today. Let's start with Breeze. 21 of 27. 314. A touchdown. Make it two touchdowns and a pick. And Marcus Mariota, the rookie out of Oregon State, who now is 13 of 22. Make it Oregon. 211. Oh. Two touchdowns and no interceptions. He's got a history of taking care of the football last year at Oregon. 42 touchdowns and just four interceptions. See why Coach Kelly enjoyed him up there. Here is a handoff on first and ten. The picking and poking moves of Ingram bring him four yards on the play. And he's down to the 31-yard line of Tennessee. They've got five players rich on this New Orleans offense with more than 25 receptions each. I mean, the one thing about Breeze, you know, he's, he's, he's spread it out to, what, seven different guys, I think you mentioned earlier on today. Yeah, he doesn't discriminate eight right now, and uh, he's gonna throw it to the guy that's open. Second down and 10, dropped. There was great pressure put on him, too, by Derek Morgan. Uh-oh, Manawanui. He's got a lot of vowels in his name. Yeah. Breeze has got to get it up and down quickly. Not an easy catch, but one you, you think he can make. The third and six. Most of the third downs have been third and six plus. Ten vowels in his name just because he's got third down and six. Breeze, nice catch made. First down grab. It's Cooks. With the coverage on the play by B.W. Webb, who picked off Breeze in the end zone. Six-yard pickup on third and six and a first down. Yeah, Breeze just makes it look so easy, Kevin. We talk about his accuracy. He's got the highest career completion percentage of all time, 66.3%. Over 70% twice in his career in 2009 and 2011. Great anticipation. The ball comes out quick, and he's deadly accurate. First and ten, multiple tight ends. Drew... And behind the back of his falling down receiver, Willie Sneed. Some coverage, including Cody Riggs, incomplete. 
And again, Parrish Cox is out. He has re-aggravated the hamstring. Yeah, this is an impressive graphic to me when you look at Drew Brees. And, and that's an NFL history. And there's some really good quarterbacks there. Look at Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning on that list. Chad Pennington didn't have the strong arm, Kevin, but he was very accurate. Second down, 10. 10th play of the drop. Breeze underneath the grip. This tackle there by Brown. Grabbed by Griffin. Down to the 11. 14-yard pickup and a first down. Bottom of the pile, too, is Susie. This is a really nice job. You're going to see Ingram. He's just going to slip out. They're trying to throw the ball down the field. They all go special. All the seams. It's not there. Drew pumps. Checks it down to the, the back. Ingram He makes the linebacker miss. I mean, this is just this is just good football by the Saints. Ray Horton's done a nice job dealing up some interesting pass coverage for that defense of Tennessee. You know, you've got to continue to change it up against a quarterback like Drew Brees. You kill! All set. All four, ready! Three tight ends, first and ten, Ingram. Again, Stuff played it well. Nice defensive work there, Arakpo and company. Loss of two on the play, back to the 13. Daquan Jones is really playing well up front. He is, he is watching that number 90 jersey. He spent a lot of time in the Saints' backfield, getting good push and good penetration, he is good especially in the running game. There's no pushover offensive line either for the Saints. No, they've done a nice job. And you know that the, the Titans are doing a really a good job rotating that group to keep them fresh up front. Nickel, second 12, breathe. Oh, he goes down. There goes a flag. May have led with the helmet on the play as the sack was made by Bass, who was waved by Chicago after playing a couple years with the Bears. Personal foul. Welcome to pass. Arat goes in trouble. Arat goes going to get tossed. We don't like the call. He better be careful. Well, he, he doesn't like the call. You're going to see. He does hit him with the crown of the helmet, but. But when a quarterback crunches, Rich, I mean, you can't redirect your head. Not a lot you can do, but yeah, you can't but hit him in the face. Right. That's a good call by yep. the officials. It is. It is. You've got to be able to keep your cool. I thought maybe Breeze had, had curled a little, a little bit, bit, but, but he, he did, did not. No, he, he did not. And that was a and you shot got, right on the... And you got to know who you're hunting. I mean, Drew Breeze is not six foot four. There are multiple fouls on the play. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, half the distance to the goal. After the play was over, Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 98. Half the distance to the goal. The third penalty. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 98. Half the distance to the goal. All three fouls are enforced. First down. He's going after the line judge, Jeff yeah. Seaman. Good buddy of mine from Minnesota. Well, that last <laughs> name rings a bell. It has dead. Jerry. Jerry was a terrific referee, and we miss him. Well, that is the third roughing the passer penalty on the Tennessee defense today. It is an emotional game. It is a passionate game, even for a veteran like Arakpo, who's been in the league seven years. And heavily decorated. Big penalties there. You can have two of them because he actually went after the official on the second one. So you get the hit on the quarterback, and then you get Arakpo losing his cool in the heat of the battle. But he was not ejected. And there was a good chance he could have been. First to goal for one. Ingram tripped up nicely. What a nice penetrating move by Derek Morgan. He was the number one pick six years ago out of Georgia Tech. They get no gain on the play, the Saints offense. Morgan comes through and trips him up. 91. Well, this Tennessee defense, they, they play hard, Kevin. I, I've been impressed with them. Fifth in total defense. And a nice job. And hanging in there and battling. Ready. Ready Second goal. 
Breeze. Oh, Manala Nui, touchdown. Breeze with his third touchdown pass today. You're going to see him right there. He's actually lined up as a fullback. Kevin, we talked about his position versatility. Let's run him out to the flat late. Williamson not able to get there. That is his first reception as a Saint. He had seven catches with New England. An extra point by Forbath makes it 28-20. Eight-point New Orleans lead just into the fourth. A roughing the passer penalty on Bass as he got Breeze. And the Saints cashing in. Uh-oh, Manawanui. He's got 414 career touchdown passes, including three today. It just seems like every game he breaks another either New Orleans record or a league record. Guys, this is so consistent week in and week out. Three touchdown passes to three different receivers. A cluster from five yards deep will bring it out. Out the wing, T.J. Graham, who's a reserve wide receiver, forces him out of play. 32-yard return coming up next. Peyton Manning returns to Indianapolis with his undefeated Denver Broncos. I'll take on Andrew Luck and a very turbulent Colts team right here on CBS Sports. By the way, Manning only 284 yards away from passing Brett Favre for the most all-time. I know number four sitting back in Mississippi watching us today. There was a flag thrown on the play on that return. Looks to be against the Saints. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 56 with a late headbutt, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. That is the ninth special teams penalty against the Saints. They had eight all of last season. Yeah, can't go in there and start pushing guys around like Bowdy did. Yeah, the headbutt, that, uh, that'll get you every time. You gotta be able to keep your poise in a critical situation. So look where they begin with 43. Yeah, only Still a one-score game. First and ten. Fake to Andrews, and he's got his receiver. Harry Douglas found the seam down to the 43. He had to pick up a 15 yards on the play. Good find for Mariota to Harry Douglas. This is this maybe the most difficult throw in football. Watch him. He's, he's going to turn his eyes to the defense with the play-action fake, and now he's got to get this ball up and down right behind the linebacker and in between the corner and the safety. That's a really sharp play by Marcus Mariota. Jarris Bird made the tackle, first and ten. Andrews. Out of congestion. Looked like maybe Kevin Williams got a handful of jersey. One yard loss, back to the 44. Williams, longtime player, 13 years in the league. A lot with the Vikings. Last year was Seattle, 35 years of age. And he's in there on early downs to stop the run. Can still get it done. Sure can. Second 11. A cluster in. Four defensive backs. Douglas, room to roll, and a first down. Bird was there to meet him and force him. But Harry Douglas will pick up 12 after he just caught one for 15. Well, this is their answer to pressure. I mean, just kick the ball out wide to Harry Douglas and let him go to work against the secondary. This is 10 or 12 yards of, of grass before the nearest Saints defender is there to knock him out of bounds. Coordinator Rob Ryan. He's never met a defense he doesn't like. <laughs> That's... And I think in, in talking to Sean Payton on Friday, he said, hey, look, he said, sometimes we have too much in. Sometimes you have to have that intervention with Rob Ryan and just scale it back a little bit for our defense. Here come the Titans again on the move. 32 of the Saints first and 10. Andrews, Berg. 
He came from the secondary and shot right through with a nice stop and a loss of a yard back to the 33. And this just comes with an experience. And I want you to look at this. Look at the, all 11 defenders. All oh, oh, where's gosh. the safety? No one's in the middle of the field. So what does he do? He runs the football into a, an 11-man front where the safeties aren't even accounted for. So as he gets further along in his development, he'll be able to change the play and take a shot in a situation like that. With a second down and 11, Walker hit by Bird down to the 28, gain of five. So for a young quarterback, what's more difficult, getting the long plays and understanding all the complexities of play call or, or reading the defense and, and absorbing all that information at the line? I think they're equally diff difficult. But talking to Mike Malarkey, he said the challenge for Marcus has really been the play calls. There's a lot of terminology, a lot of verbiage that he didn't have in college. And you see right there, McNulty calling the plays in for him. I, I give. I give Jason Michael, the offensive coordinator, a lot of credit, Kevin. The plays have been coming in fast and furious. They've had no problem with the play clock. Good point. Although we did have to go to the sideline to get the call right there. Maybe some communication issues. Third and six. Mariota across the middle. Here comes Douglas. Grabbed by Hawthorne from behind to the 19-yard line. A catch and run of nine and a flag at the 39. Douglas has had catches of 15 and 12 yards on this drive. After the play with personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 20, late hit on the quarterback. Brian Dixon. Half the distance to the goal, first time. How about that? It's actually going to be Kyle Wilson. Kyle Wilson's coming off the slot. You can see him right there. Oh, yeah, they said 20. It was 24. You're right, Rich. You gotta be smart. These, yeah. these quarterbacks nowadays, I wish I was still playing. You can't even get near them. I mean, you can't get near them. If you, if you hit these guys and it's even close, you know the flag's coming out. I can throw for 5,000 yards today. You just sit back there and hold the football. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. First and goal at the nine. Marcus Mariota. Andrews. And making the stop, John Jenkins out of Georgia. It's a one yard gain. He's down to the eight. If you, even if you're the play caller now, you're, you're constantly reminding the young quarterback about the situation in the game. Hey, we're down by eight. Now, if we score here, let's not get too excited. We've got to go for two in this situation. You've got to constantly remind the, the, the quarterback, and then the quarterback has to relay that information to the other ten men in the huddle. A couple tight ends, including a third who's in the backfield as a fullback. Fasano, he moves now to the third tight end. Second goal at the eight. Mariota. He's got the touchdown. What a grab on the play. Justin Hunter. An eight-yard strike. Marcus Mariota has thrown his third touchdown pass today. And the Titans are back in business. They're going for two, obviously. Just watch this slam. You're going to see Hunter up there. Look at Look at the safety, not even a factor, and a really nice throw by Marcus Mario, get it, getting it up and down. I love those big receivers, Kevin. Guys that are six foot four, 200 pounds, that can use their body in tight spaces. His first touchdown reception of the season. Now the chance to tie. You got the ball in the left hash. So you see that sometimes you think maybe a quarterback roll to the right because they put the ball in the left hash, maybe to give the quarterback a little bit more room on the boundary. Mariota, Walker, they get the two, they get the tie. Walker with a great catch with a lot of traffic around him. At 28 apiece, we're tied and 7.06 to go. Mariota with an eight-yard touchdown strike to the angular Justin Hunter. And then Delaney Walker, a big player all day, comes up big again. Heisman winner Marcus Mariota, 18-27, 260 yards, three touchdowns and no picks. Dueling with the great Drew Brees, 24-32, 335 with three touchdowns and a pick. And Brees sets to get his offense back out there. A two-point conversion, Rich, we are tied at 28. The rookie's actually holding his own, Kevin, against Drew Brees. That's been pretty impressive, Marcus Mariota here in the second half. The kickoff from Suckup. If you'll wave it away, touch back to the 20-yard line. That's where Breeze will begin it. All three timeouts. His arm is warm and his team is tied.
Thursday night football puts the Buffalo Bills with coach Rex Ryan against Ryan's old team, Darrell Revis of the New York Jets. It's only on NFL Network Thursday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. All right, all fingers right now pointing at Breeze. I think this crowd is stunned. I really do. I am, aren't you? I don't think we saw this. First and ten. Looking deep, but the pressure is there. He's held and he has to throw it away. Arakpo is on one side. Daquan Jones, who you just talked about, Rich, was on the other. Second down and ten. Boy, they do a great job just getting pressure really on both sides. Really squeezing Drew Brees. He's going to step up into the pocket. Now he knows he has to get, he gets flushed. Just kicks it out, avoids the sack. We talked about this during the break, Kevin. The, the pressure that's put on this New Orleans offense. I mean, in order to win, you've got to score 30 points or more every week because that's what your defense has given up, 29.3 points a game. Ready? Ready? What's up? Second, 10. Brees. Here comes one. Here comes Jones. And there goes the ball. Al Woods was the first wave. Daquan Jones the second. Flag at the 30. It's against Tennessee. There it is. That is that is so bad. Can you believe that? There are two fouls on the play, both against the defense. Holding. Defense number 59. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 59. 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, one thing at the top of the list of malarkey on Monday is you've got to control these emotions of your players because Arakbo and now Wesley Woodyard's been called. Yeah, now, now I want you to watch. You see the penalty. Now keep an eye on this guy right in the middle. That's Wesley Woodyard. He's going to go up and start jawing with the official and I mean you just can't do it I mean, it's the second one now we've got a rack rack pro had one and now another one crazy eight pedal leads and seven on the defense and a first intent with Ingram on the move and looking for some blocking and cuts the corner and another flag is thrown at the 46 as Mark Ingram was taking it and game six on the play to the 45 it's getting chippy now it is Holding, offense, number 10. 10-yard 10 penalty, still first down. Receiver Brandon Cooks. They're right here, I mean, you just can't miss it. Go out there and you just grab. You see, grab, grabbing Cody Sensabaugh, he can't get off the block. So the New Orleans Saints with a chance to go to 500 with the win. Three straight wins coming in, four up and four down their record, first and 20. Underneath Cooks, Woodyard is there and spins him down. And a gain of three is what he limits him to there at the 33. All right, stay tuned for the NFL Today update presented by FanDuel, time permitting. JB and company for scores, news, and highlights on a busy day in the NFL. Halfway point of the season, things are beginning to get tight. This is where the good teams begin to separate themselves That's from right. the pack. You know, well said. Second and 16. They need the 50-yard line for a first. Please, here they come again, and down he goes. It was Blackson, the rookie out of Auburn. And a third sack and a loss on the play of nine. Back to the 25. Right in the middle of your screen. I mean, Blackson's, he's fighting through. Right by Evans, who's a multiple Pro Bowl. Yeah, Avery Williamson was there as well. Really nice job. That, that front has been a terrific job forcing Drew Brees off the spot. Third and 25, and again, they need the 50. Brees underneath. They've got Snead hurdling a defender that drilled while airborne on the play. He was hit by a couple. Griffin, along with Williamson, gain of 15 to the 40. Hunting and it will take the field. Breeze could not move the offense. 
Well, the penalty was a killer. It sure was. On Cooks. Now you got to rely on your defense, Kevin, a defense that's really struggled late in games. Thomas Morstead will punt. A cluster is deep at the 11. Fair caught, 4-6 hang time, 49-yard punt. Marcus Mariota tied at 28 on the road, four and a half to go. We're in New Orleans where Marcus Mariota, who has missed the last couple games with a knee injury, has thrown three touchdown passes. He's got the game tied. He's got the ball at his 11. They need about 55 yards for a field goal, first and 10. Buying time, chased by Jenkins off the Fasano, breaks the tackle on the play of Mounty, and then he goes up the sideline for a catch and run to about the 34-yard line. Fasano, a flag is down at the 27. It's a 22-yard gain as it stands right now. Holding defense number 39. That penalty is declined, the result of the play. First time. Rich, your concern is this New Orleans defense here and while they tear down as you were just talking about. Yeah, no, really, they've struggled in the second half of games, and I'm not sure if, it, if they wear down or what, but they've given up an NFL high 152 points in the second half. They need a stop here. And Brandon, Brandon Brown needs a stop grabbing. It's his 16th penalty already this season. Number one in the NFL, as you talked about earlier, first and 10 for Tennessee. Three timeouts, and he uses one right there. Will step aside too, tied at 28. When you just look at these numbers in the NFC South, the importance of this game for the Saints to try and keep pace with Carolina, it's still undefeated. Well, great throw by Marcus Mariota. 20-yard pickup. Wow. Green has, Green Beckham has really come in handy today. I, I just love the size of these receivers, Kevin. I mean, you've got big, tall, linear receivers that can go get the football. Doriel Green Beckham, 6'5", 237 pounds. They've been very effective running those slant routes. Mariota over 300 yards passing today. First and 10 from the 46. Andrews looking for a block on the edge. Gets inside the 45 and picks up two on the play. They've gone to him a lot. 16 carries and 70 yards. Let's go to New York with Boomer and James. Ben Roethlisberger called himself out last week. He did, and he throws a touchdown pass here to somebody not named Heath Miller is the tight end. It's Jesse James. How about two TDs in the last 49 seconds for the Steelers? They take a 35-21 lead over the Oakland Raiders. 11-24 left in regulation. Back to Kevin and Rich. And this is without the terrific running back who's now lost for the season with an ACL, Le'Veon Bell, and an MCL, and out till next September, they say. Well, no Le'Veon Bell, no worries. D'Angelo Williams, Kevin, he Good did call. a really nice job stepping in the last time with a suspension to Le'Veon Bell early in the season. So on this drive, Fasano for 22. Green Beckham a catch for 20. Saints have two timeouts. Tennessee with two timeouts. Suckup, who has not missed since last year, is getting ready. And if you're the Titans, you shouldn't be thinking at all about a field goal. Win this game by going the distance and scoring seven. Second down and eight, tipped and on the ricochet, maybe for a third time today, it was Walker. He is amazing, the concentration. He only picks up a yard, but the third time he's caught a deflected ball. That's got to be a record <laughs> for what it's worth. <laughs> Stefan Anthony, he's going he's gonna to jump up, and for some reason, Delaney Walker has been in the right place at the right time for Marcus Mariota. And how about the reshuffled line continuing to buy time for the quarterback and con continuing to keep him clean in the pocket. Titans have lost six consecutive games coming in with a new coach. They fired their other one earlier in the week. Third and seven. Mariota. 
And looking for Walker. What? There's a penalty flag. It is thrown on Browner as they were going for Walker. Most heavily penalized player in the NFL. Well, that's who you have to go after, Kevin. I, I think at times Brandon Browner panics. He doesn't do a good job locating the ball. Pass interference. Defense number 39. Spot of the foul. Automatic first down. I think part of it is he has a reputation with the officials. Yeah, that's Look at grabbing Rich. right there. He can't. I mean, he can't grab. If you can't cover Delaney Walker, you got to get somebody else out there. But if you grab, they're going to call it every time. Well, he has started the last two Super Bowls for Seattle and New England. And that was coming into today. He's been penalized twice today. First and ten. A cluster's in. And he nice his way down to about the 30-yard line. Take time out. In there by Kevin Williams. Timeout taken. New Orleans has one remaining. At the 30-yard line. Second down and eight. After the New Orleans timeout. Suck up is ready. Mariota, let's see what he's got up his sleeves. Three tight ends on the field. They like these heavy jumbo sets with these tight ends. Remember now, Mike Malarkey is a former tight end. Andrews in the backfield. Andrews the call. And he gobbles as a flag thrown. He gobbles up about four more down to the 26. Oh, that's a killer. Holding. Offense number 89. 10 yard penalty, replay second down. That takes him out of field goal range. Yeah, you're going to see Supernall right there on the end. I mean, he just he gets beat inside and then he tries to grab. Yep, tackled him. And he just can't do that in that part of the field. You have to him. understand the situation in the game. Now you got yourself backed up. You got a second and 19 with a rookie quarterback. They walked off only 11 yards by mistake. So it's at the 41 where it's second and 19. The cluster. And he got tripped up by Williams on a gain of three. Another timeout by the Saints. Good use of timeouts by Sean Payton. He's trying to get that ball back, knowing that Tennessee has a very difficult third and 16. And you see the communication between Sean Payton and Rob Ryan there on the sidelines in terms of what to do in this situation. The career long for kicker Ryan Zuckup is 54 yards. He has not missed a field goal this year. Well, he's kicked two today. They just need to pick up a little bit. Marcus has got to be smart in this situation. You cannot take a sack. you got to find me a completion here on third and 16. It's McCluster. Good tackle made by Richardson. Boy, a very conservative call in that situation. It was a gain of two. And they'll spot him at the 36. And Suckup comes out onto the field. We're just going to let this thing run down to the two-minute warning. But a very conservative call, Kevin, in that situation. Maybe they were anticipating some type of pressure and thought maybe they could split one right up the middle with the back. We've reached the two-minute warning. All right, here comes Ryan. Suck up to try to get Tennessee the lead. A 55-yarder. It would be a career long. In 2012, while with Kansas City, Suckup kicked six field goals here in the Superdome against the Saints, including the game winner in overtime. He has made 15 consecutive field goals going back to last year. He's kicked two today. If he hits this, it would give his team the lead and be a career long 55 yarder. And it is hit the crossbar.
And the problem with that is you give Drew Brees and the Saints the ball at the 45-yard line with just under two minutes to go. It was accurate and just that close. Boy, it needed about another six inches. Now the problem is, as you just said, Breeze has it at his own 45-yard line. He's got no timeouts. No timeouts. But it's not a problem for Drew Breeze. Plenty of ways to stop the clock. Just watch the sense of urgency with this offensive line. Watch how quickly they get to the ball after a completion. There's field goal kick. Good time for Beth. Kicked the game-winning 50-yarder last week against the Giants. Breeze first and 10. Downfield. Oh, he missed an open receiver. Willie Sneed incomplete at the 40. Well, that's not, that's a surprise, Kevin. You very rarely do you see Drew Brees miss a throw like this. It's a nice job resetting. He just throws it behind a wide open Willie Sneed. Brees had the seven touchdown passes last week. He's got three touchdown passes today. 352 yards through the air. And he has faced this situation before, as that graphic tells you. Second down and ten. Ingram is short. He'll go for Steed, who's knocked out of bounds by B.W. Webb. Down to the Tennessee 33, and a pickup of 22 and a first down. Sneed, six catches, 95 yards. Well, I just see up the top of your screen, and Drew Brees does such a great job with the pump fake. They sell it. The, the, the corner doesn't bite on it, yet Brees is savvy enough to throw it on the back shoulder of Willie Sneed. Tennessee with a couple timeouts, and like you said, New Orleans out of timeouts. First and ten. Nickel second here. Here they come. Breeze goes down. He was hit on the play by Arakpo with his second sack today and the fourth sack by the defense today. Here in New Orleans, it's a loss of eight. They're back to the 41. That's amazing, Kevin. They don't even block Brian Arakpo in the last play. We'll show it to you in a minute, but, man, it's amazing. Must have had a, a communication breakdown up front. No timeouts for New Orleans. Second down, 18. Armstead the block at the left tackle. Looking for Cooks, overshoots him. Incomplete. The coverage by Sensabaugh and coming over was Searcy, third and 18. Well, they don't even block Brian Arakpo. I mean, this is amazing. The, the left tackle steps down, the back steps down, and they turn the Titans' best pass rusher loose on Drew Brees. You can't make these type of mistakes in a critical situation. Richley need about nine or 10 yards here to get in four bath field goal territory for Bath again like we mentioned kicked a game-winning 50-yarder last week against Eli Manning and the Giants they just signed him a couple weeks ago third and 18 back right. Back right. Ready. 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 blocked by Ingram wobbly ball it's picked up by Colston on a cross he's down to the 28 shy of the first down but deeper into territory with a 13-yard pickup right there with just a little crossing route. You see the blitz come from the Titans. It's a long way to go from Webb on the backside, and this Colston's not an easy guy to get down on the ground. We're going to see Forbath on fourth down. It's a 46-yard try. That 50-yarder was last week. Forbath has played for Dallas, Washington, and now the Saints. I wouldn't use the timeout to ice him in this situation. I'm going to save the timeouts, Kevin, in case he does make it. So I have some time there with a minute, a minute to go. 46-yarder for the lead, and it is no good! I don't know if someone got a piece of that or not, but perhaps they did. It looked as if it had been deflected at the line, and he misses. Just keep an eye on it. First of all, you've got a low snap. You've got a new holder, as you point out. And Cody Sensabaugh comes screaming off the edge. I think he may have gotten a piece of it, I Kevin. think he may have too, Rich. Look at, look at the ball. 
I mean, that, that's not even close. Well, we mentioned before that Thomas Morstead is holding. He's the punter. The normal holder is the backup quarterback, Luke McCown, but he's out with a back injury. Now with two timeouts left in just under a minute, Tennessee's got plenty of time. Each team is in the field goal to take a lead. Two timeouts, first and ten. Marcus Mariota. Ooh, sends a bullet downfield and incomplete to Justin Hunter, second down and ten. It's been a crazy game back and forth. Both kickers missing makeable kicks. So we have a Tennessee team that fired their coach midweek and interim coach in Mike Malarkey. They've lost six consecutive games. They're welcoming back their rookie quarterback who missed the last two with the knee injury. And ironically enough, at one and six, they're still closer to first place in their division than the Saints are at four and four in theirs. Second down and ten. It's Hunter. On the throw by Mariota, the tackle made by Brandon Browner. It is a gain of five, and the gain to the 41-yard line. And they're not going to take the timeout. They've really got to hustle here. I think it's a mistake not to take the timeout, Kevin. You waste so much time trying to get lined up. There's other ways to stop on the clock. Third down and five. Look how much time they've wasted. Mariota, that was thrown down the sideline with the deflection and the incompletion. They're looking for Green Beckham. Delaney Walker, who has caught three deflected passes today, almost had his fourth right here. And a better throw gets it done. I mean, he's got him. He's got the corner with his back to the receiver. Just got to put a little bit more air on it and let Doriel Green Beckham go get it. He has to come back for that one. Well, let's see. The punting unit is out there. It's kind of like last week. They had very little time against the Giants and made it down. Look what happened last yeah. week. I know. And get a punter that gets a face mask call, and the Saints get a chance to kick a field goal to end the game. Turn to punt. Murphy is back. Good hang. 19 yard line, hang time of 4 6, and a 40 yard punt. And the rookie Murphy snares it, and Breeze has 11 seconds and no timeouts with which to work for a team that came off that incredibly exciting win of 52-49 over the Giants last week when Breeze threw seven touchdown passes and became the oldest quarterback in pro football history to throw for over 500 yards at the age of 36, soon to be 37. I think you take a knee here, Kevin. You play for overtime. you got no timeouts left. I'm very surprised if Drew Breeze throws this ball down the field. Yep, they're just going to take a knee. Which means overtime. Well, the Saints looking for a win with the chance to go over 500 for the first time this season. This is the end of the regulation. We will now commence overtime. They've won three consecutive games coming in. They began the season, Sean Payton and his Saints did, 0-3 and, and then 1-4. and The question wasn't, how they would handle adversity because they've handled it well to get back to 500. How would they handle success having won three consecutive games and over a team they're playing today that comes in one and six? I think the big question for the Saints, Kevin, is how can they stop anybody? I mean, the defense is, it's, the, the numbers aren't good. And, uh, you know, I thought today against a, a Tennessee offense that really struggled moving the ball the last month, uh, you know, they'd have a difficult time, and yet Marcus Mariota's been sharp, 22 of 33, 309 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, they have over almost, well, they have, oh, just under 100 yards rushing already in this game, and they put up 28 points on the Saints. Jerome Boger, for our new audience, is our referee here in new orleans this afternoon he officiated super bowl 47 right here at blackout super bowl in, in the dome here he goes all right captains for the overtime we're going to play one 15 minute overtime period fourth quarter timing rules will be in effect each team will have an opportunity to possess the ball unless the team that goes on offense first scores a touchdown or the team that goes on defense intercepts it and runs for a touchdown okay each team will have two World timeouts. Uh, all replay challenges will come from the replay assistance. All right. Tennessee, by being a visiting team, gets called the corn toss again. Just salute the service seal on his heads 
and the NFL shield is Tails. Tennessee has chosen Tails. And it's Tails. You want the ball? Tennessee has won the overhead toss, overhead, overtime toss for Willie Free. We head to overtime after this on CBS. Well, we just heard these overtime rules by Jerome Boger, the 15-minute OT, a touchdown or a safety, as Rich said accurately, on the first possession wins the game, and the score is tied after each team's first possession. Next score wins it. A couple timeouts per team. No coaching challenges. And the flip of the coin was won by Tennessee. They will get it. And rookie Heisman Trophy winner out of Oregon, Marcus Mariota. 22 of 33, 309, three touchdowns and no picks after he's missed the last couple games with that MCL sprain on the late hit by Olivier Vernon of Miami a couple weeks ago. Well, he showed great poise and composure, Kevin, throughout the course of this game. Been really impressed with the job that Marcus Mariota has done. With the kickoff sent out by Forbath. They just look how effective he has been. Gets a little bit of a break here early in the game. And of course, Delaney Walker right there for the 61-yard score. And a little easy flip in the back of the end zone. Hits Justin Hunter for the touchdown. The two-point play to Delaney Walker. Delaney Walker, Kevin, has been his guy in critical situations. Six catches, 92 yards, and the two touchdowns. And a two-point catch, Rich. Rich tied this game at 28. Here we go from the 20, first and 10. Andrews in the backfield. They go to Green Beckham. And he corkscrews his way to the 34-14 yard pickup and a first down for the rookie out of Oklahoma. Well, he's just going to post up in between the linebacker and the corner. Again, we talk about size. Size matters at that position. How about Doriel Green Beckham had seven catches coming into today. Now has four alone this afternoon here in Louisiana for 68 yards. He's taken the place of Kendall Wright. He's done a nice job. First and ten. Douglas in motion. Andrews the call. He got a block from Walker. He breaks a tackle on that run by Joan Dunbar and finds another first down. This is a 15-yard gain on the ground for Andrews, who's got 87 on the ground today for the Titans. Yeah, look at the movement they get up front, that left side of that offensive line. I mean, again, Kevin, you've been talking about Antonio Andrews. He has really run with some power, and he's finished every every run that he has had. And look at the sidelines. You look at the sidelines for Tennessee Titans. Everybody's standing up. Everybody's into this game. You saw Rob Ryan moments ago, his defense beleaguered. They come in number 30, and Tennessee has tried to take advantage of that. First and 10, Andrews. One back was pulling. Not much game right there. We should mention, too, for those just joining us, that the offensive line for interim head coach Mike Malarkey has been reworked, reshuffled for today. And they haven't given up a single sack. Wormack has done a nice job at the right guard. Bell moved over from the left guard. You get the rookie, Gallic in there, of course, Looney. Terrell Lawan has done a nice job. The left tackle position after giving up a couple sacks last week against the Houston Texans. They have really done a terrific job up front, not just in terms of the pass protection, but the running game as well. Same stay on the 43, second to long eight. Mariota, second option, and that's the tight end who gets up, that's Craig Stevens, look at him, ball goes downfield, taking it to the 25 of New Orleans. A catch, a fall, a run, 24 yards from Stevens, only his sixth catch of the year. Well, just look at the look, look at Joe, Jolon Dunbar, he's going to drop out, you see the tight end is going to hook up over the ball, now freeze it right there. Watch this, look at the location on that throw, the left shoulder of the tight end away from the driving linebacker great anticipation great location by marcus mariota remember now a touchdown wins it first and ten from the 25. two tight ends they will block andrews into the guts of that defense into the 24 in a gain of a yard and from the secondary, Kenny Vaccaro comes in and makes the stop. Just crowding the line of scrimmage. I mean, it's this is eight-man front football. 
Saints just daring the Tennessee Titans to throw the ball down the field. And keeping it out of the hands of Breeze. That's, that might be the most important thing of all, huh? I, I, I am not at all thinking about a field goal in this situation. You just know you don't want to give Drew Breeze another opportunity, Kevin, in this game. You want to finish him right here. Second and nine. Fake to McCluster. He goes across the way, and he's got... Douglas on the far sideline to the 16, a yard shy of the first. He picks up eight. So on this drive, Green Beckham for 14, Stevens for 24. Andrews with a run of 15 yards and an eight-yard throw right there to the former Falcon Harry Douglas. Marcus Mariota has made a couple really nice throws, moving to his left, a difficult throw for a right-handed quarterback. Third and a long one. Mariota, Green Beckham, first down, now goal to go, the tackle made by Bird on third and a long one, he picks up nine, pinpoint throw by Mariota, first down. Well, look at this slant route, he gets Browner turned around sideways, never even sees the throw, and well, that slant route has been a, been a real blessing for the, for the Titans, and it's a route that Marcus Mariota throws very, very well. He got drilled. Green Beckham is over there. First and goal at the eight. Andrews in the backfield, multiple tight ends. Mariota. Chased by Jordan, gets it off to Walker. He'll fall at the five on a gain of three. And the tackle on the play made by Joan Dunbar. Well, a nice job, Kevin, moving the pocket a little bit with Marcus Mariota. Saw him run to the left, a little naked bootleg to the right. Changing the launch point, making it difficult for the Saints front seven. How about on this drive? The rookie out of Oregon, the Heisman winner, Mariota. Five of five on the drive. It began back at their 20. Second goal at the five. He's got the time. He's got the receiver. Fasano, touchdown, Titans win. Under interim head coach Mike Malarkey. Marcus Mariota with another touchdown pass, his fourth today. And a five-yarder to the tight end. Fasano wins it. A terrific game with one spectacular play turned in after another. Well, you're going to see Fasano. He's right here. You're going to see everyone else, though, Kevin. Everybody's going to be moving this way to the right. And he's just going to sneak out. And he gets lost in the wash. This is a design play. It's a throwback to the tight end. The Saints never saw it coming. It's a play, it's a play that Mike Malarkey ran with the Vikings and with the Steelers as a player. Look at how emotional Mike Malarkey is after that win. Can it's been a very that? difficult oh my week goodness. for the entire coaching staff of the Tennessee Titans. Tears in his eyes on the road in one of the most difficult venues in the NFL. And a quarterback who's been out the last couple games with a bad wheel. And a journeyman tight end with the game-winning five-yard touchdown reception. In overtime, it's the Titans stopping a six-game losing streak. You've been watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 50. Now for FanDuel on CBS. Let's go to New York for the latest scores and highlights right after this.